It's the 1AA Football National Championship. And Montana can celebrate their first national championship. Montana has won the national championship. Montana comes back to Chattanooga looking for title number three. The Dukes of James Madison are making their first title game appearance. JMU is ready to start its own championship tradition. James Madison is going to the championship game. championship is at stake tonight in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Two-time title winner Montana taking on a James Madison team making its first ever 1AA championship game appearance. And here are the seventh-ranked Montana Grizzlies. Montana Big Sky champs, 1AA record 12th consecutive postseason appearance. James Madison reaching the title game for the first time ever, and the Dukes are set to take the field here in Chattanooga. by knocking off rival William and Mary last week. Montana took care of Sam Houston State to reach tonight's championship game. Hi, everybody. Dave Bash alongside Rod Gilmore and Trevor Maddox. And even if you have not followed 1AA football this year, you might recognize some of the names of the coaches and players and two guys in particular. Rod, both of the quarterbacks in this game tonight that are starting tonight played at 1A schools, transferring from those big-name schools. You know, and they've raised the level of quarterback play in Division I AA. Guys like Justin Riscotti. Well, a year ago, he was the backup quarterback at Louisville behind Stephon LaForce. Now, he's the starting quarterback for James Madison, directing their ground-oriented attack, but he's an efficient thrower as well. On the other sideline, there's Craig Oaks. You remember him. He was the quarterback at Colorado, played in a Fiesta Bowl a couple of years ago, and now he's the focal point of a pass-happy attack from Montana. And Trevor, when you have big-time quarterbacks in a big-time game, they got to come through and make big plays. That's right, and the guys opposing them don't have the big-time names. Not yet. James Madison's defense really epitomizes that. They set a 1AA record this year with sacks, with 55 in the season. Isaiah Bradshaw, their best defensive lineman pass rusher, will be going against a rookie in Cody Baylock. But it's freshman safety, Matt Lazat, that is the epitome of what we will see in the future of this team. He is somebody you don't know yet, but he's being called possibly the best defensive player in all of 1AA. You've got the big names at quarterback and a bunch of snarling no-names that will be after him. And James Madison trying to win its first title. Montana in search of its second in four years. Opening kickoff is next. James Madison taking on Montana for the 1AA championship. Both of these teams traveling different paths to Tennessee. With more on that, here's Rob Stone. Well, Dave, according to the James Madison staff, the biggest fact surrounding this game is the fact that Montana has not had to play a road playoff game. In fact, the Grizzlies' last six games have all been at home in an atmosphere that the Dukes say is very similar to LSU's Tiger Stadium. Now, that is serious home field advantage. On the flip side, for James Madison, this is as close to a home game as they will have or will have had in the past month. In fact, with a win today, they'd be the first one AA football team to win the title without having a home playoff game. Montana, just 2-2 two and two on the road this year. They need to prove that they can play away from home. Great atmosphere here in Chattanooga, Rob, as we look at our key stat. James Madison outscoring opponents in the first quarter, 92-3. to three. However, in the second quarter, James Madison has been outscored by 40 points. So if the Dukes are to win today, they probably have to put together four quarters against this potent Montana team. And James Madison wins the toss and will defer Paul Wontuck to put it away. And Levander Seegers and Jefferson Heidelberger will receive for Montana. Montana is the home team wearing the dark jerseys. James Madison, the road team tonight, wearing the white tops. 
And not a very good kick to start us off. It is scooped up by Seegers, and he is up to the 28-yard line before he is brought down. Craig Oaks, transfer from Colorado, 30 touchdown passes on the season, nine in the NCAA championships with only one interception. We had a chance, guys, to talk with him yesterday. Great kid, very humble, and says he's grown a lot since his days in Boulder. A very mature quarterback. You could get you get that sense talking to him, and people say he's been very mature since he was a freshman in high school. Montana will start at its 29-yard line with four wide receivers. They run the run and shoot, and it's a toss sweep on first down and only a two-yard gain for Hilliard. And we go ahead and take a look at the skill players. Heidelberger, the leading receiver with 75 catches. Hilliard, first team, Big Sky. The offensive line for Montana. Proctor is second team All-American, mostly at left tackle, playing right guard tonight. And Mr. Baylog at right tackle, the true freshman, going to have his hands full tonight with Isaiah Bradshaw, the left defensive end for James Madison. Second down and nine at the 30-yard line. And it's an end around out of the shotgun formation. Down the sideline is Heidelberger, and he is out near the marker at the 39, but Carter made the hit. Got to be pretty close to the first down. The James Madison defensive line, we talked about Bradshaw moving from linebacker midseason. And Beach had a sack and a forced fumble last week. Two solid linebackers, Walton and Townsend, both can run. Five defensive backs for JMU, Lazat, the redshirt freshman, second team All-American, and Kent had an interception for a touchdown last week. Bradshaw on the season, four and a half sacks, couple of forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. And it is a first down for Montana at its 39-yard line. It'll be Hilliard on first down. Hurdles a defender and up to the 44 for about five yards. Hey guys, Craig Oates, you remember him when he was in Colorado, talked about him making the transfer, and it was kind of odd that he would leave. He had a lot of playing time in Colorado, had some concussions, but the relationship with the coaches, they're kind of sour. It, it did go sour, and one of the things about his maturity is that when he left, he thought the coaches failed him. Now he realizes that he also failed them, and he's very much at ease with his responsibility. He's grown up a lot. Got married last January, says that's uh, one of the reasons why he's matured so much, although the coaches say that he's the same guy they recruited a couple of years ago. Seegers getting out of trouble, breaking tackles down the sideline inside the 40-yard line of James Madison. That's an 18-yard pickup for the dangerous Lavander Seegers, a senior from Colorado as well, Colorado Springs. Uh, this is a run-and-shoot offense. This is just a bubble screen. Two receivers out to block. They get the ball out to the guy they want to have, Seegers, and he shows you his ability to run after the catch. Well, he's a little guy, 170 pounds is what he's listed as. He's not that big, but he's immensely strong in the upper body. We'll see him break those upper body tackles all game. From the 38-yard line of James Madison, first down. Oaks dumps it off. Justin Green breaks a tackle, and he's still going, breaking two tackles and carrying defenders to the 18-yard line, a 20-yard game. Let's go to Rob Stone, get an update on the field conditions. Yeah, Dave, it's not often we talk about field conditions on a beautiful, cool, dry evening. Scratch that. New sod was laid down before this game. This is one of probably... I'd say about 50 to 60 massive chunks of turf that have been ripped up already. This is the opening drive. You see it littering right down the middle of the field. This could become a rather large factor as the game moves on. It looks like the divots that Maddox takes when he walks. Yeah, it looks like my hair on a Sunday morning, actually. <laughs> First down to the 18-yard line. It's Hilliard. And this time, he is stoned. No gain on the play. Sid Evans chasing him down, Quinn Walton, the speedy linebacker, first team, Atlantic 10 also there for JMU. Hey guys, Montana's gotten down the field by yards after the catch. Missed tackles, that's the one thing that the defense told us they couldn't afford to have happen. Yeah, they said that Mickey Matthews, the head coach for James Madison, that it's not receptions that hurt you in these games, it's the yards after the reception. Montana's gotten those so far. Second down, it's Oaks, and he gets smoked back at the 21-yard line by Trey Townsend. Had a big game last week, off to a good start here tonight. 
Well, this is something that, that we expect from James Madison. They will give up some yards on defense, but they are the best team in the Atlantic 10 in the red zone. And now down in the red zone, Montana, which had their way in the big field, is finding no room to run or throw. Townsend had 10 tackles, forced fumble, for, uh, and a fumble recovery last week in the win against William & Mary. Third and 10. And some moving along the line. Brad Rhodes is moving. Offensive lineman. First penalty of the game. Bobby Houck in his second year. Went 9-4 and four last year. And Gene Hartles, our referee tonight from the Southern Conference. Full start. 76 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third in. Houck, an assistant under Rick Neuheisel. They're both Colorado and Washington now in his second year as head coach here. Keep your eye right there. Brad Rhodes, there's he's, the movement. He's normally a right tackle. He's a left tackle protecting the blind side because of injuries. On third and 15. Oaks dumping it off. Inside the five is Hancock finally dumped. But a first down as Montana picks up a third down and 15, a 21-yard game. That's a confidence killer for James Madison. Now we'll see how they'll respond because teams just don't do this to the Dukes down in the red zone. They had Montana third down, stop them here. They're limited to a field goal attempt. Instead, first down and almost a touchdown. But they're designing these plays perfectly, having receivers clear out and then bring another receiver, a third receiver, running underneath the cleared out coverage wide open. Remember, James Madison has not given up a touchdown in the first quarter all season. On first down in goal, it's Hilliard. And he gets stood up. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage by a host of defenders. But Carter there, along with Shambly, who had a couple of fumble recoveries last week. Second down and goal. Hey, guys, you watch Craig Oaks out there. He looks like he's having a lot of fun. You know, we've watched him during the season, seen games on tape, and he's actually very active, orchestrating things. Sometimes he does it just for fun, but he is so into this game and this team, it's fun to watch him play. Tenth play on this drive that is at four minutes right now. Two tight ends. And they hand it off to the fullback who pitches it in the last second. And not fooled was James Madison. Hilliard down for a loss. Tracked down by Hakeem Jordan, the backup linebacker. They're Trevor trying to take advantage of an aggressive defense, trying to attack. They figure they'll commit to the first guy, but look at Lazat get up there. And then you have a nice additional help from Jordan, 35, coming over. That little pitch didn't work. At yeah, number 13, Walton is out there as well. That first time I've ever seen a play like that. Probably the first time James Madison's ever seen it, and they stuffed it. Now they spread it out on third down and goal, and James Madison only had 10 players on the field. So the Dukes will be forced to take a timeout here. Mickey Matthews, the head coach at James Madison in his sixth year. Went six and six last year, but finds himself in the national title game in 2004. Montana making its fifth title game appearance, the first ever for James Madison. And the Grizzlies are on the doorstep, third down and goal, but they're going backwards. This series started at the one, but back-to-back -back plays that went for losses makes it third goal for three. That's Hancock in motion. Oaks rolling that way. Now back to the other side. And he's got a wide open man. Touchdown, Heidelberger. That is the 10th touchdown of the season for Jefferson Heidelberger. And Carpenter on for the extra point. You want to start on the 31st touchdown pass of the year for Oaks and his 10th in the postseason. And it's 7-0 Grizzlies. Remember, James Madison had not given up a touchdown in the first quarter. In its first 14 games, they give one up during the first drive for Montana in the 1AA championship game. Let's go back to this touchdown. Heidelberg is down here. 
You'll watch him go in there and then come way back out. And this guy here has zone coverage, and he gives up his zone responsibility to come after Oaks. And that allows Heidelberg to get back behind him, and there's the touchdown. Well, the reason Heidelberg knew it was zone coverage was because when Tate Hancock went in motion, no defender followed him. They were just going to pick him up on the zone. So Oaks knew he would have extra time to allow the receivers to get open. 11 play drive, 4 minutes and 52 seconds. And as we mentioned, first quarter touchdown allowed by James Madison. First time that's happened. And Trevor, your point is, is well taken because when you are in that area of the field, it's hard to play man-to-man -man coverage because you might get bumped off by receivers running too close to you, two or three of them together. So a lot of teams will play zone down there to avoid that. And you're right. Oaks picked it up and knew he had more time. And he took the time. That's why he was able to scramble. And that's why Bobby Houck knows that he can do a lot of things with this quarterback. He's very calm on the field. Didi Boxley, along with our Don Bransford, back to receive Pete Sloan's kick. And another short kick. This will sail out of play. And will be very good starting field position at the 35-yard line for James Madison. Saturday afternoon, ESPN has a great college basketball doubleheader. Check these games out. Kentucky, Louisville, and a battle for Bluegrass State bragging rights. Then he got Wake Forest and Texas at 2 Eastern. That's Saturday on ESPN. Justin Riscotti, transfer from Louisville, played in five games last year. Decided, hey, I'm not going to sit out and transfer to a 1A school. I'm going to go to 1AA football where I do not have to sit out a year and play right away. And that's what he's doing and doing well. Had an excellent game last week with three touchdowns against William & Mary to advance James Madison to the title game. First down at the JMU 35. And Maurice Bennett fumbles the ball, got it back, though, at the 33. Lost a couple of yards. James Madison perhaps a bit nervous in its first title game appearance. Well, safety Matt Lebsock, number 27, is going to blitz. There's no one to block him, and he kind of kind of freaks out the back there. Better sees him coming and doesn't get a firm grip on the ball. James Madison was plus five in turnover ratio last week. 28 points off of William & Mary turnovers. Second and 11 from their 34. Montana got back after jumping. There's a screen pass, nowhere to go, as Tolly is dumped by Tuff Harris. Loss on the play. Let's take a look at the skill players. Boxley, the game-winning touchdown last week. Tolly, who just had that catch, Ridley, a pretty good tight end. On the offensive line, Davis at left tackle, 340 pounds. He's going up against Dustin DeLuy, who is 227. Mergurko at left guard, first team, AP All-American this year. So third down and 13. Four wide receivers. Riscotti, they run the screen. It's Alvin Banks. And he gets drilled at the 38-yard line. Gain of only five of the play. And JMU will punt the ball. DeLuey had two sacks in the semifinals. Mike Murphy had three as second-team All-American. The linebackers led by Shane McIntyre, the leading tackler. In the defensive backfield, three sophomores and a junior. The starters combining for 13 interceptions this year. Hey, guys, that's not a good start for... James Madison, they're usually on the board early in the first quarter. Englehart to boot it away. Lavander Seegers, one of the best punt returners in the history of 1AA football, has it at the 15-yard line. Hardly drive down. Seegers finally out of bounds at the 31. But again, a penalty flag down, likely against Montana. Yeah, they got him for a block in the back, down and around the 16-yard line. Look like Quentin Jackson, number 34 for Montana. Excellent start 
for the Grizzlies, not for Mickey Matthews and JMU. Today's NCAA Division I AA Football Championship game is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Let's make it real. And the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. The Chattanooga Choo Choo was started running back in 1880. It was last used between Knoxville and the Smoky Mountains in the 1940s. Became famous as a result of Trevor's favorite singer, Glenn Miller. Sung that song back in the 40s. Well, you know, that uh, was my first prom that <laughs> Glenn Miller played in 1943. <laughs> you went to a prom? In 1943. Oh, <laughs> wow. Oh, Come on, tis the season here, guys. Oh, no. First down of the nine, and not much there on the ground as Hilliard goes nosediving forward like he tripped on the turf. We'll check in with Rob after this play to get uh, a little bit more on uh, these field conditions, but you saw it there. Big divots getting in the way of running backs as Hilliard lost a yard. We'll get our statistician on how many tackles the turf has for the group. Get him on that. From the eight-yard line. Hilliard on the misdirection. Barely back to the line of scrimmage. Towns in there first as James Madison is flying the football here on defense. Back to Rod on the field. Well, Dave, earlier I showed you that clump of sod that was ripped up. Take a look at this. This is netting that was laid underneath the sod. It has been ripped up and brought to the surface. I asked uh, Montana QB Craig Oaks, how's the footing out there? One word, terrible. Like there's no roots out there for the grass. It's similar to running around in tennis shoes. That's not good. And Rob, if it's an ad advantageous to anybody it would be James Madison because they played in horrible field conditions last week up at William and Mary at least they're a little bit used to it on third and ten everybody's covered Oak still able to find an open man as Talmadge picks up the first down of the 24 and Craig Oaks has been spectacular so far uh, you know he's a threat to run and that makes plays. It makes it difficult for a defense. He saw it on the touchdown. He threatened him to the end zone. And then this time, you see him come up in the pocket, Trevor, and find his receiver. And he finds it in between four guys. Look at that. It looks like Dice, the number five on Dice. Two in front, two in back, receiver in the middle. Accurate throw. Five for five is Oaks for 77 yards. Oaks changing the play now on first down of the 24. Oaks again to throw. And again, he has Talmadge dumped immediately at the 30. Gain of six on the play. Clint Kent with a tackle. So I got a question for you. Was he really changing the play? You know, when we talked with him yesterday, he says he does a lot of stuff out there just for the heck of it, just to have fun. He says, you know, he's watched Peyton Manning and all these guys, so he and his receivers, they just do this stuff for the heck of it. Sometimes it's a play, but very rarely. They just have a lot of fun. Look at this. Is that real or not? Yeah, is he checking out of a play, or is he just trying to get James Madison to change some things and move her up? On second and four, Oates to the air again. And he's got his tight end Walden pretty close. Looks like he's got the first down to the 35. Tackled by Tony Lazat, the leading tackler for James Madison. Walden, a transfer from Oregon, who played in four games at the Pac-10 school three years ago. And we talked about the turf. They go to a quick drop here, three-step. And good footing that time for Oaks. And Walden, bottom of your screen, number 87, six foot seven, 275 pounds. Tony Lazat, the freshman, goes 210 pounds. Great tackle. Well, Lazat, the James Madison coaches field, is the best recruit they've ever had. Oaks again buying time, and he's got Heidelberger down the sideline. Inside the 35, as Oaks remains perfect. Are you kidding me? Did you see that throw? <laughs> they were right between Lazat and Townsend. 21 and 6. They were right there and he zipped it in. Well, we talked about the guy transferring from Colorado, and this is a big time Division 1A throw right into a small window. And Heidelberger knew where to slow down his route. He was sprinting across on the crossing route, slowed down just for a second when he got between Lazat and Townsend, and that's where Oaks hit him. 
120 yards on 8 of 8 passing for Oaks, who says, hey, I'm finally healthy. That's one of the reasons why I'm playing so well. Here they run it on first down to Hilliard. He pounds forward to the 30-yard line for 4 yards. Lazat and Walton on the tackle, but they pay for it as Hilliard lowers the shoulder. Well, look at the tackle as he comes in. Hilliard's going to lower his shoulder and look at Lazat come in. And that's number 13 as well, Quinn Walton. And this is just a hard run and hard tackling. There's Lazat goes down, there's Walton goes on, and these people are physical. And Hilliard really came on this year. Justin Green was the starter. He was thought to be the star of this uh, team, but Hilliard has taken a starting spot. Oaks with a ton of time. This time, the pass is broken up as he was trying for Talmadge across the middle. That's the first incompletion thrown by Oaks. Cortez Thompson broke up the pass. Montana up 7-0 on James Madison, the 1AA championship game from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Montana in search of its second title since 2001. James Madison has never been here before. Finley Stadium, Dave Pash, Rod Gilmore, Trevor Manich, and Rob Stone. Nicky Matthews in his sixth year at James Madison is hoping to start championship tradition at JMU. It's been in Montana for a long time. This is their fifth time in this game, winning twice. And Hilliard goes down after a misdirection carry to the 28 for about two yards. Well, they're in no man's land here. Yeah, it's it's going to be fourth down. They're just outside, just inside the 30. You kick a field goal here, or do you go for it on fourth down? And keep in mind the field conditions out there. Yeah, they're going to kick the field goal, but uh, with momentum, I might go for it here. Yeah, I, it just looks to me like the, foot, the footing out there is pretty bad. I'd probably go for it on fourth down instead of kicking out of that area. 46-yard attempt by Dan Carpenter as long this year is 49 yards. And it's a fake. And Carpenter breaks the tackle. And I think he's still short. Going to be short, it looks like, by about a yard and a half at the 25-yard line. He almost got it after the missed tackle by Townsend, but Lazat caught up to him to bring him down. Watch him toss it right between his legs. Lazat under his legs, back through. Now watch number eight, Rodney McCarter, the safety is going to come in and miss this tackle. That's cool trickeration. Or check that, it's, it's uh, Townsend. Townsend, the linebacker. But when you're a kicker, you can make a linebacker miss a tackle? And you know, they didn't get it, but that was a great gamble. I mean, I, I didn't think they could make a field goal out of that field position, that condition out there. I thought it was a good gamble. Let's see if it provides James Madison with some momentum. Alvin Banks, who started the year as the number one tailback, into the game, they fake it to him. Scotty in trouble. Sack, back at the 20-yard line. Mike Murphy, the leading sacker, 12th of the year. Murphy, a second-team AP All-American. He's a stud at three sacks last week. Gets one here tonight. Well, if you take a look at number 90, Murphy, he just fakes outside, goes inside on big Corey Davis. Davis goes about 350 pounds plus, and that time a speed move to the inside got it. This offensive line is built for run blocking, not pass protection. Second and 15, again a play fake. With Scotty trying to fire one in there, and the pass was overthrown. Tolly, the intended receiver. But what's going on here is Montana taking James Madison out of what they want to do. James Madison wants to pound the ball and force Montana to bring an eighth man up, and that will open up the pass. But you can't pound the ball unless you've got normal down and distance. And there they had second long. Now it's third ultra long, and they can't pound the ball in these conditions. Well, the other thing is I think the pace of the game is too fast for James Madison. It's being played at Montana's pace. Everything's in a hurry. A few sense of nerves, guys. We've seen some breakdowns. Passes have been high. Third down and 15 with Scotty rolling out. And this pass should have been caught at the 41-yard line, but it was dropped by D.D. Boxley. He's saying that it uh, should have been pass interference by Tuff Harris, but no call. You know, Boxley doesn't drop many. He made a spectacular catch last week against William & Mary that changed the game. And right here, he just drops this one. He uh, was pushed a little bit, but, you know, he's got to make that catch, and he knows he's got to make that catch. 
you could understand if James Madison would be a little bit nervous playing against a juggernaut like Montana, never been in this situation before. But they got to snap out of it quickly here. About 17 players on the Montana team were here as freshmen the last time they played in the championship game. Seeger is racing up to get this one, and it's fair caught at the 41. Montana will have pretty good field position. The Grizz leading 7-0 late in the first quarter in Chattanooga. James Madison giving up more points in the first quarter of this game than it had in the previous 14 games combined in the first quarter. 142 yards of total offense for Montana, minus two for James Madison. And already five missed tackles on defense for James Madison. From the 41, Oaks with a little screen to Seegers. Another missed tackle, and he gets close to midfield, about nine yards in that play. Bruce Johnson with the tackle, missed tackle again by Lazat, second one for him. And that missed tackle cost him about five yards on that play. And they've already given up a lot of yardage after the catch. And that's just a result of missing tackles. The one thing they can't do, they're playing good coverage down the field, but on the short passes, they're just not tackling. Second and one. And motion is Heidelberg. And he gets it. This time, they hold him up. Hit first by Thompson. And about two or three more Dukes come over to make the play. And that's what you got to do. You got a gang tackle. Hold the guy up and let the uh, let your teammates get over there and make the play. Well, Heidelberg is in motion so that he has a running start to get that corner. Gets a great block from Green, but then Cortez Thompson comes up and, and solves the problem, at least for one play, of shoddy tackle. For 80 yards after the catch already for Montana. That's missed tackles, resulting in 80 yards of extra yardage for Montana. So far, Montana, three out of four on third down. It helps when you're at third down and one or two every single time also. This is third and one. And they're not going to get it. Green is drilled at the 50-yard line. Going to be probably a yard shy of it, and it looks like they will punt the ball. Brandon Beach made the play. Excellent defensive tackle who's played through every injury that you could conjure up in your mind. He's funny. I, you know, this guy has had so many problems. His knee regularly pops out, and he just fixes it right there on the field. Yeah, he has cartilage loose in there, and, and sometimes what it'll do is lock up. And he has to take it and move the cartilage out of the hinge of the joint so he can bend it again, then he runs the next play. Also overcame an Achilles in injury, torn Achilles, and a torn ACL. The punt is fair caught inside the 15-yard line by Cortez Thompson, 35-yard punt. The Division Three College Football National Championship tomorrow at 11 a.m. For more information on that, you go to ncaasports.com. This is the 1AA championship game, and Montana trying for its third ever championship. Leads James Madison on a field that has been torn up already in just over 14 minutes of play. 7 0 to score. James Madison's got to put together a drive here just to keep its defense off the field. From the 15, Fenn are able to get to about the 18 for about five yards. Now that's James Madison right there. That's what they want to do. Run the ball right up the middle. That time they went right over left guard Matt McGurko, who was first team All-Atlantic 10, first team All-American in one double-A. And the offensive line has been known to go up to the head coach and say, hey coach, give us the ball. Quit throwing it so much. Mickey Matthews' team could be down more. It's 7-0 Montana in the 1AA championship game in Chattanooga, Tennessee. <laughs> Grizzly fans a long way from home, but a great contingent on hand. They draw close to 22, 23,000 for their home games, and but Two-thirds of their fans made the trip to Chattanooga, Tennessee for this game. Sounds like a home game for Montana. They were 10-0 in front of their home crowd this year, 2-2 two two on the road. Here is Fenner getting stuck at the point of attack by Tyler Joyce, a true freshman. That's a four-yard gain, though, so to bring up third down and short. Well, 
Fenner last week had 117 yards against William Mary, including a touchdown, 106 in the second half. James Madison has four different running backs. The guy who had been starting most recently, Raymond Hines, however, is injured with a bad rib. Alvin Banks, as you see there, is in the game here on third down. And they give it to Banks. And he's got it out of the 26-yard line. Let's take a look at our game track brought to you by Coca-Cola. Well, part of it is the sod. Head coach Mickey Matthews of James Madison says playing on a loose field like this is like playing basketball in socks. It affects your pass rush. It affects everything you do. It didn't affect Craig Oaks. He bought some time and then found Jeffer Jefferson Heidelberg in the end zone for the only touchdown of the first quarter. Mickey Matthews, an assistant at Georgia and at Marshall. Are both these head coaches assistants at major schools with Bobby Hawk, the head coach for Montana, assisting at Colorado and the University of Washington. Here's Scotty in trouble. Just got rid of it and completes it to his tight end Ridley. And he is up past the 40-yard line for a 14-yard game. And Justin Riscotti told us yesterday he doesn't run an awful lot. He had to do, learn to do that in this offense. It's helped him here. He gets out of the pocket despite the bad field conditions. By some time, Mike Murphy's chasing him, and he still gets rid of the ball to Tom Ridley. And Rod, that was amazing. I mean, the, the defender was at his ankles in the process of taking him down, and he delivers a ball that's accurate to Ridley. He looked like his buddy, Stefan LaForce from Louisville. Well, Scotty transferred from Louisville. Played in some games last year when LaForce got hurt, but then when Brian Brom signed, Riscotti said, I'm getting out of here. I'm going somewhere where I can play. Alvin Banks would love to get out of that pile. He got smothered at the 40-yard line, no gain of the play. And Riscotti talked about the whole scenario with Brian Brom showing up. He said, you know, his brother was a quarterback coach. Uh, they had pretty much said he was going to compete for the starting job, and he was already the backup, and he said, look, I'm not going to get a chance. They won't even let me compete. Things change, he said. You know, John L. Smith had recruited him there, and then John L. went to Michigan State, so he wanted to get out and find another opportunity. John L. Smith called Mickey Matthews, the head coach of James Madison, said, I think you should take a look at this kid. He did, and Riscotti ended up playing here. Here he is on second down. And he dumps it off, and there's some running room down the sideline. Alvin Banks out of the backfield, but a penalty flag down. Banks took it to the 42. End of about 16 yards, but again, a penalty flag. This offense misses Raymond Hines. And he's a different kind of running back. He's out with the rib, like you mentioned. He's the scat back, and they don't have him tonight. Well, he actually wasn't expected to play. Offsides. Now the defense. That penalty's declined. First down. Alvin Banks was the starter at the beginning of the season, was leading the Atlantic 10 in rushing, then broke a non-weight-bearing bone in his leg. So Maurice Fenner came in. He jumped to the top of the Atlantic 10 rushers. He separated his shoulder. That's when Raymond Heinz came in and absolutely lit it up. Without Heinz, this team would not be here right now. But now Heinz is hurt. First down at the 42. Montana brings that safety down for an eight-man front. Here's Banks. And the safety who came down makes the tackle. Dustin DeLuey over there also, defensive end, along with Cooper to make the stop. You know, the, the runs up the middle for this game for James Madison are not working specifically because Montana watched film of last week, and this man, Raymond Hines, was gaining yards straight up the gut last week in the semifinals against William & Mary. Now they're going to stop that, and they have. Saw Tyler Thomas, 31, creeping up. That's the extra guy in the box who isn't blocked, and he's able to get involved with tackles. Play fake on second and nine. And Riscotti trying to hit Banks. Can't hang on to it. Incomplete third down and nine. So we, we, we had a chance to see Hines on the sideline. And, and when you don't have him, you lose that running back that has the quickness to get outside, he can make people miss inside, and he can give you a 30, 40 yard run just like that. They also have Antoine Bolton, but he's not a guy that you're gonna pop between the tackles. Hines 
as you take a look once again at the field. Wow, they need a better, a better class of net, I think. <laughs> well, you know, they had to resod it at the end of the season about a month ago, and it just hasn't taken completely. You know, Trevor, we were looking at Hines on the sideline. I'm kind of surprised to see him dress because, you know, they can only suit up 53 players for this game. Yeah, and, and they are rewarding him because he really isn't expected to play because of that rib injury. Third down and nine. And there's Bolton into the game, and they fake it to him. And Riscotti delivers as he's hit, and it's complete to Boxley for a first down to the 26-yard line. We are seeing some tough quarterbacks. Hey, Oates has made some plays, and now Riscotti's making plays, hanging in there with the rush coming, delivering the ball, and taking the shot. And we're seeing some tough receivers. Look at Boxley go up in the air and gets hit right in the back before he even comes down. Quarterback's got to hang in there. Scotty does it. Nice job. We had some barbecued ribs for dinner, and uh, these receivers are getting here in this game. Shame on you, man. <laughs> Working the rib angle already. You just want more food. First down of the 25. Pass play. For Scotty in trouble. Gets away from one man, away from another, and then stumbles and loses the ball. Then he got it back at the 36. And again, the field makes the tackle, the second tackle for the field in this game. And no, there's no, a no, no. I, th I think the field is the leading tackle. We we'll probably have, what, three? Well, three here, for the field? Here's what Riscotti's looking at in terms of whether to run or throw. So you see one safety in the back. They want to throw when that happens because the other safety who's not there is up at the line to stop the run. That's why they choose to throw, and that's what he's looking at now. The rush gets there, but take a look. He just slips and falls on that turf as he's making a cut. But that's what he's looking at, Rod, those safeties in the back. Exactly. If there's one, he wants to throw it. If there's two, he wants to run it. And that's because when that safety is down near the line of scrimmage, he's free to make tackles. We want to... Don't have enough guys who can block him. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be a face mask against Montana. It seems like Bobby Houck's team has dominated this football game, yet it's 7-0, and James Madison has the ball on the cusp of the red zone with a chance to tie it. Well, in the first quarter, in the first quarter, total yards, two for James Madison, 151 for Montana, and yet they're only down 7-0. James Madison led 21-0 last week in the semifinals against William and Mary. William and Mary came back before James Madison rattled off 26 straight points. And here goes Fenner to the 10-yard line. Their best run of the day. That's a 9- or 10-yard pickup. Trevor, you'll appreciate this. Normally, they move this small defensive line. They didn't move them this time. They knew exactly where they were, and they got a hold of them. Those linemen took care of them. Yeah, and we talked to center Leon Steinfeld and left guard. Matt McGurko yesterday, and they said that if Montana stays in front of them, they were going to blast them clean off the ball. You're right, Rod. They didn't move, got blasted. Yeah, you want to make sure the smaller, quicker defensive linemen are, are moving or you're blitzing to help them out. First down at the 12-yard line. Fenner stumbles on the turf and then gets dropped at the 8-yard line. A gain of 4 on the play. Blake Horgan made the tackle. He played on the 2001 team for Montana that won the national championship in 1AA. Is that an assisted tackle for the field? I think play? so. I think three and a half now yeah. for that, the field. That was the 12-yard line. 12-yard line has, has shown itself to be quite a tackler. That stuff is torn up. And as we look at it from up here, we don't see... There you go. That's the view. It looks like there's a million gophers out there having lunch. <laughs> Bill Murray would have a field day. But if we kill all the gophers... <laughs> Second down and six at the eight. Riscotti off his back foot. Nearly threw a pick. He was trying for Banks, who was well covered. And Adam Hogue, the strong side linebacker, almost uh, had the interception. I'm amazed at how loud the Montana fans are down here. And what, what do we have? Seven, eight thousand of the fans came from Montana for this thing, and down around the end zone, they're on their feet, 
yelling, trying to make noise to disrupt the James Madison offense. And it was colder when they got here than when they left Montana. It was 35 there. It was in the 20s when they got here earlier in the week. 13th play of the drive. Over the last eight games, 52% on third down. And the field makes another stop as Bolton gets tripped up again by that 12-yard line on the end around. So it'll be a field goal coming up for James Messon. We always talk about the 12th man. Little did we know it's the 12-yard line that's the one. Now, it's got student body left. The blockers are out there, but then he trips up on that, that really slick, unstable side. You know, because of the field, this field goal is not a gimme. Well, the reason is the plant foot. Take a look when he hits that plant foot. Is it stable or does it slip out? David Rabel from 28 yards. Hits the upright and goes in. It counts, and it's 7-3, Montana. And welcome back to Chattanooga, Tennessee, where James Madison has pulled within four. Certainly an emotional evening for Coach Mickey Matthews and his son Clayton. Two broken necks as a result of auto accidents in an eight-month span left him paralyzed from the waist down. The 22-year-old should be a senior on this team in which he had played everything from punter to quarterback. But the full-time student still an integral part of the Dukes. He's worked as a student assistant instructing the kickers and helping run the computer editing system to break down film. Guys, six months ago, Clayton was in intensive care. Tonight, he's on the cusp of a championship ring. What a great story as uh, Clayton and Mickey are very close, father and son. And Clayton, as Rob said, played quarterback at James Madison for a couple of years. This is his senior class playing in this championship he's, game. He's not shy about giving his opinion. He tells his dad, you ought to run this, you ought to do that. He's, he's usually on the sideline during the game. And, and even when he was six years old, he displayed that when his father coached at Marshall with Jim Donnan. As a six-year-old child, Clayton was telling them that they should have Gatorade instead of water at the football camp. Mickey won a high school, or make that to Clayton uh, won a high school championship in Georgia as a quarterback. So pretty good player. And may end up being a pretty darn good coach. Wontucks kicked the best kickoff of the night as uh, the footing, again, has been an issue because of the field on kickoffs. And then a fumble at the 20-yard line by Seegers. He got leveled at the 20 and lost the ball. He hurdled the defender and maybe didn't tuck the ball tightly enough and got popped. But Montana gets it back at the 18. That's the very definition of wedge buster. I think this is 35. Akeem Jordan busts through three guys in the wedge, and that's the guy that gets left over. But in the process of leaping, he loses a firm grip on the ball. I think it was Isaiah Dotton Carter who got in there and knocked the ball loose. I think he punched it, punched it out with his left hand. So the field has been an issue for the offenses and also on kicks, kickoffs, and field position always important, especially in a game that looks like it could be low scoring. From the 18-yard line. Hammering forward as Hilliard past the 25 to the 27 for about eight. Saturday morning, Mary Hart Baylor meets Linfield in the Amos Alonso Stag Bowl to decide the 2004 NCAA Division III football championship. ESPN 2's coverage begins at 11 a.m. Eastern time. You gotta love watching college football, regardless of who's playing, especially when it's for a championship. Glad you could be with us tonight in the 1AA final from Chattanooga, Tennessee between Montana and James Madison on second and one. Craig Oaks, former Colorado quarterback, has a first down to Heidelberger and more. Heidelberger may have a touchdown. There is a penalty flag down. Heidelberger knocked out a play on the near side. Actually, may have stepped out of bounds before that. No penalty flag down, but I think he stepped out of bounds well before he was finally knocked out at the 20-yard line. And one of the officials was right on top of it. And as soon as Heidelberg passed him, he went right to the spot, marked it, and started waving and trying to call everybody back. Heidelberger was really taken off down that sideline. And what you saw fly, Dave, was the hat. Whenever a player steps out of bounds, the official will throw his hat to signify it. So first down to 43. And again, is he changing the play, or are these dummy calls?
Justin Green on the flanker screen up to the 46-yard line for about three yards. These guys find it refreshing or at least surprising when we talked to Hauk yesterday and he said that he's not crazy about the playoff system. You know, he said he's been in the bowl system when he was an assistant at Colorado and Washington and because of the, the pressure academically on the students and because of the long season, he said he's not that crazy about it. He had 15 to 20 players taking finals last Wednesday night. And remember, in 2000, when he was in Washington, Washington beat Miami early in the season, yet was the odd man out in the BCS championship game. Miami went instead of them. So you'd think he'd be in favor of the playoff system, but isn't. Here, Oates makes another great play, finding Tate Hancock, and he is inside the 35 to the 32. For Oates knowing where to find his receiver open, and you talk about the, the stresses on him on the plane out here, Oates took an administrative law final, and then yesterday he took a U.S. presidency final at the team hotel, and now he's picking apart the secondary of James Madison's defense. And conversely, the James Madison guys finished up their finals last week, and you know, a couple of players said, we've been pros all week. We don't have to worry about anything except football. Oaks is picking apart a president right now, James Madison. First down at the 32. Hilliard stumbles to the 30 for a couple of yards. And Mickey Matthews, a coach at James Madison, he didn't agree with how his position was, you know, let the guys play it off he said personally playoffs aren't good for coaches but he thinks it's great for the sport he said they almost ran him out of town last year with a six and five record and he said six and five and one a gets you to a bowl game and one double a it almost gets you fired in one double a you've got 117 teams identical to one a but in one a you've got 56 teams go to bowl game in one double a only 16 make the playoffs and some good ones get left out you got a cal poly team that was nine and two that didn't make it to the playoffs and a lot of other teams like that that wonder wait a minute how do we get left out but when you look at playoffs though there are four teams seated of the 16 the rest are all regional three of those four teams did not make it to the final four semifinals. so if you just set up computer system you would have had three teams that didn't or that wouldn't have won it on the field in the finals We've got a, a scoreboard problem here. Harvard, a top 10 team, did not partake in the postseason, the 1AA championships, because the school will not let the players because of uh, academic reasons. Well, and you can see why Harvard feels that way. They don't want to have their student athletes taking finals on planes and in hotels. There were no finals this week at James Madison. Maybe that's one of the reasons why Coach Matthews is okay with uh, this system, because their finals were done, and they had their undivided attention this week. Then they run the screen this time to the other side. Not much there for Heidelberger. Tackled by Sid Evans after a gain of two or three. But how about Sid Evans? Defensive end out there to tackle Heidelberger on a quick screen to the wide receiver. You got to give a, a lot of credit to Montana's offensive quarter with coordinator Rob Finnessy. Doing a really nice job. He put in this run and shoot offense. Got Craig Oaks on top of it as quickly as possible. Third down and six. Oaks has time. He's going to the end zone. Dropped by Talmadge. He had a touchdown, and he knows it. And Tony looks up the free safety. Had a chance to make the play, but you saw him slip right there, and he couldn't get over. And that ball hung in the air as it was tipped and then came out. Rod, had he not slipped, there was a good chance he could have picked it off in the end zone. Okay. Look how long this ball is in the air now. And it goes back towards Lazat, but he couldn't get there. This is a 45-yard attempt for Dan Carpenter. They were going to attempt a 46-yarder, presumably last time, but faked it. See if they kick here. This one is going to miss way left. So Montana is unable to come up with points. And even though the Grizzlies are dominating the Dukes, it's only a four point game. Back to Chattanooga in a moment. days.
Today's NCAA Division I AA Football Championship game is brought to you by the new Chevrolet. Ten new cars and trucks in 20 months. An American Revolution. And PlayStation 2. Live in your world. Play it all. Take a look at the Tennessee Aquarium, the largest freshwater aquarium in the world. Showcasing the Tennessee River in addition to other rivers in the world. Great city of uh, Chattanooga. About two hours from Atlanta, two and a half hours from Nashville. Right now we've got uh, an interesting game to say the least. Montana has 204 yards of total offense to 67 for James Madison, but it's a 7-3 game, only a four-point lead for the Grizz. First down for their 28. And a big running play. Fenner to the 45 and to the 46 for James Madison. A gain of over 20. Vancouver finally made the stop. A penalty flag is down. Well, they finally found a place they could run. Montana is stuffing the middle, so by going outside, they found some space for Fenner. Tacked on some more, thanks to a face mask. Well, they found some space because of the fullback. Take a look at him. Chris Iorio, 37, will get a kick out block right there, opens up the lane, and Fenner finds it. And there's the face mask at the end. That's Van Cooper, the safety. Fourth penalty for Montana. Bobby Hogg not happy with that. It was interesting talking with Hogg. We asked him, you know, you're a Montana grad. You're from Montana. Is this a dream job for you? And he said, no. He says, I want to be a coach at 1A. In fact, I had some calls from some 1A schools, none of which interested me. Fenner, as they run that ghost play, and there's a penalty flag down, don't know if they got it off. Blake Horgan may have lined up in the neutral zone. But Hauk has furthered the juggernaut that is Montana. I mean, they've had 12 consecutive years in the playoffs. Ball start. 61 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. So that's uh, Jamal Crowder, the right tackle there. This is the fifth time in the last 10 years that Montana has been in the championship game, and that spans three different head coaches. And so Hauk has done a terrific job of keeping it going, but he also would like to measure himself at the 1A level. Hauk said he talks with Rick Neuheisel on a regular basis, his former boss, and said, that know where Rick is going to end up, but could be a quarterback's coach in the NFL. From the 45, it's Fenner trying to sweep to the outside, breaking a couple of tackles, then stood up at the 43, only a two-yard gain. Van Cooper, the strong safety lead to the charge for Montana. Well, they had success running to the right. This time they try the same thing out to the left. Doesn't work nearly as well, but James Madison getting desperate to find some way they can get the running game cranked up. Uh, Shane McIntyre just ran right past the blocker to make the play. I mean, that, that's great linebacking. You get a guy out to block you, you say, uh-uh, not happening today. I'm going to go make a tackle. Cooper, the fastest guy on the defense at uh, 4 3 5 40 speed. So second and 13 at the 43. Banks is in the game now, a running back. Scotty fakes it to him, eludes the rush. Finally down at the 39, actually got about four yards of the play. Well, Scotty was never a running quarterback at Louisville, but James Madison has asked him to move a little bit, and he's done it successfully this year. He has eight rushing touchdowns. Well, that, that's a tough situation there. He's facing a nickel defense on a second and long, which is hard to throw against, and there was some pressure. Now Montana has gone to six defensive backs because of this third and nine, third and ten situation. Montana has absolutely dominated first and second down. It's third and ten now. The average to go for James Madison has been third and seven. Scotty has Boxley 
Going to be close to the marker depending on where they spot it. Forward progress should give him a first down. Tough Harris hit him immediately, but forward progress will take it to the 28 and a James Madison first down. For Boxley is not any bigger than about 5'8 or so, but you have to respect his speed. And you see him drive the defender, Harris, off and then run the comeback, and he comes all the way back to the ball to make the catch. Well, Boxley was a, was a high school Virginia State 100-meter sprint champion. That's why they've got to lay off. He had five catches for 80 yards and the game-winning touchdown last week. A beautiful stretch out on a deep ball thrown by Riscotti. From the 28, they pound Fenner again to the 25 for three yards. This is James Madison's game. Pound, pound, pound. Little play action here and there. Well, that's old-style coach Mickey Matthews. He wants to do things the old-fashioned way, and Bobby Houck said that when he was at Colorado, it was a similar style when he's the old Nebraska teams, when they would pound it at you, then do play action. That's what Mickey Matthews is doing at James Madison. And that's Jeff Durden up in the box, up in the booth, the offensive coordinator, who's a very patient guy. I mean, he will stay with the run game. He's not going to give up on it very quickly. He'll take his shots down the field. But for a guy who's only 39 years old, he's an offensive coordinator who's really very patient. And Durden just happy that he can see this week. Last week, the field at William & Mary did not allow him to see some of the plays on the other side of the end zone. He was calling plays that he couldn't see. They toss it out to the outside and inside the 20 to the 15-yard line is little L.C. Baker listed at 5'7", really about 5'3". <laughs> You're killing him, man. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Well, he's listed at 5'7". Yeah, but I saw him. He's not 5'7". <laughs> Look at the block by Nick Tolley. That is just a, a terrific block that, that sprung the outside. Yeah, on Shane McIntyre. Blocked him out of the way. And the ball now is at the 18-yard line. How about that? 110 yards since the first uh, two drives, but they only had two yards total. So first down at the 18-yard line. Running play to Banks. And the holes are opening up as Banks gets to the 10 for eight yards. Well, look at All-American left guard Matt McGurko. He's right here. He's going to get into his man, and he's going to stand him right straight up. Now take a look. Right there is McGurko, and the running back goes right off of him. McGurko gets his pancake, and it's not just that they're gaining yards, guys. It's the way they're gaining yards. They're starting to wear down that front of Montana with their big offensive line. With these hogs like that, I mean, that's why you got to move that defensive line. And you can't sit in front of these big old guys. Look at them. Yeah, they get dirt and grass stains and everything. They like that kind of stuff. Three seniors on that offensive line, and then you got McGurko, a junior, who's their best offensive line. Banks is undercut at the eight, pretty close to the first down. Mike Murphy hit him first. Well, you talk about why McGurko, number 53, has all that grass on the front of his jersey. He's getting hit by defensive linemen. He's getting hit by every down. Here he is right here. Take a look at what he does. 53, he gets a double team. He goes up on the linebacker. Then his own guy puts a knee right in his kidney, and he falls down into that turf again. That man is earning the dirt that's on his uniform. 137 points of the postseason, guys, for Montana. James Madison put up 48 last week. How much of what we're seeing today, only 10 points total, is the field? How much is it the great defensive play? What do you guys think? I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, I, I think that Montana has squandered some opportunity in the field. It has hurt them a little bit. I think James Madison, after a poor start in the first quarter, they've been patient, and they've just kind of hung in there. Well, when you get your opportunities, you have to score. And I think Bobby Houck, with the, all of his experience in the postseason and at high levels, knows that when you've got a first quarter like they had, where they had 151 yards as opposed to just giving up two to James Madison, but you're only up by a touchdown, James Madison will have their opportunities. If they convert, it doesn't look good for Montana. Right now, this thing is anybody's dogfight. Okay, he's a little bit short, so it'll be third down and one at the nine-yard line. And Montana mixing up what they do defensively. That's Jeff Hammersmith, their defensive coordinator, and it seems like every time he doesn't move his defensive line, they know it. Riscotti taking it himself. All depends on the spot. 
These are the hardest ones to spot because you can't tell where his knee went down because you got eight guys on top of him. Well, the official's right at the 12-yard line. He crossed that marker, or 13-yard line. Oh, come on. He's guessing, isn't he? Well, but that's where he is. So now it depends <laughs> on exactly guessing. where yeah, that chain is. He's got to be guessing. I think it's right about there. <laughs> it's just his educated guess is a lot better than most. Well, they're going to have to measure this again. But now this is fourth down, Rod. Field goal, or do you go for it? You know, I always like points. If I if, if there's the confidence in the field right there, I kick the ball. But if your if your kicker can't get footing, then you have to go. But they they picked up the first down. It's a new point. It's a new point. But I'll tell you this: in this situation, it's a championship game. If you want to win a championship, go win it. I would have said go, go for it. it. I, I don't know of many games that you win in the second quarter when it's only seven three. Yeah, but a point's a point's a point. <laughs> Second quarter or fourth. Man, I'm surprised it took this long for you guys to find something to argue about. Uh, he just thinks you ought to go for two points right from the opening gun. Uh, he just thinks that you ought to go by the book every time and don't use the coach. Guys, be quiet. We're going to play. Thanks <laughs> to the five and to the four before he stood up. They're getting four or five yards a hit before and there is a late flag that flies in. Four or five yards before somebody makes a hit, which means that front five is firing off the line for James Madison. <laughs> Trev, what's it like as an offensive lineman since you played that position in college and in the NFL for 12 years playing in these kind of conditions with field where you can't get your feet and you're the biggest guy out there? Well, when you can't get your feet, it goes back to what Mickey Matthews says. It's like trying to play basketball in socks. But it's also hard for the defensive line because, Rod, you said that they're not stunting, they're not slanting. Part of the reason may be they can't get enough footing, so they're saying dig in where you are. They're still sorting things out. After the play, personal foul, 98, Montana. After the play, personal foul, James Madison. And plays offset. There you see it was right there was the push in the back. Yeah, that's uh, Kerry Mullen. And then the retaliation. Yeah. George Burns for James Madison. You know, George Burns shouldn't have been called. He was pushed in initially as well. Second in goal. Handoff to Fenner. It'll be third down in goal. That's good defense. Swarming defense. Yep. yep. Adam Hogue made the play for Montana. That's the kind of defense that Jeff Hammerschmidt used to make, uh, used to play when he was at Arizona as a defensive player. Second timeout taken by James Madison. The Dukes on the doorstep down four. Twelfth play of the drive coming up for James Madison, looking to take the lead, going into the locker room. Third down and goal coming up from the four as you see players taking divots of dirt and throwing them out of the way. They go two tight ends. They're going to fight third down here and threw to a tight end for a touchdown last week in the semifinals. Here's a running play. Fenner is going to be stopped at the one. James Madison will use its final timeout. What do you do, guys? Fourth and goal. I think the fact that they ran it on third down, that they decided that they were going to go on fourth down. We'll see what James Madison does when we come back to Chattanooga. James Madison down four, fourth down and goal coming up. Merry Christmas. That's what Montana is hoping for. And it will be just that if Montana can win this game. So they made that decision on third down. They were going to go. Now, I kick it and take the points because the field conditions are bad down there. You could slip. Fenner. Second effort. Touchdown, James Madison. And that is a great piece of running. Maurice Fenner, who originally was the backup tailback, became the starter because of an injury to Alvin Banks, then got injured himself, having a terrific postseason. The extra point is good by Rabel. And James Madison, despite 
being dominated for most of his first half, leads by three with 16 seconds remaining in the second quarter. This is all about leg drive. Number 37 fullback, Matt Iorio. It, right here, he's gonna come in on number 50, Adam Hogue. He keeps his legs driving. Fenner keeps his legs driving. And that drive is what brings it in for the Pater. That was a great run, especially considering how bad the field conditions are down around the goal line there. I mean, you could easily have lost traction. But Fenner, what a great effort to get in. Not doing anything special. 11 running plays out of the 13 plays that they ran on that drive. Well, we talked about how this offensive line will go to the coach and say, Coach, we got him. We, we look into their eyes. We can feel it. And even with all this bad footing, give it to us because we're mutters. And I wouldn't be surprised, Rod, if the offensive line wasn't told on third and goal, guys, we're going to run it twice. It's on you. Yeah, when, they called, when they called the running play on third down, that was a signal that they had already decided that they would go on fourth down. Again, they re this field in between the end of the regular season about a month ago and this game. That's why uh, you see all the divots on the field and it's wreaking havoc even on kicks. We have not had one decent kickoff yet. Paul Wontuck will try to Boot one deep here. Seegers and Heidelberger are back for Montana. And again, look at that. And it's fair caught in the 36-yard line. I don't know if that one was an attempt to try to kick it away from the return guys because so late in the first half or if it was because of bad footing by Wanta. Well, I think considering some of the kicks we've seen, they may have just given up on the notion of trying to boot one into the end zone because they can't get great footing. Plus, those return guys are dangerous, and, and they want to keep it away from them. What's he doing down there? <laughs> Look up here. That's Heidelberger going against Kent. From the 35. Instead, they go to the other side. Talmadge with a catch and out of play at the 45-yard line. 11 seconds left, which means they can probably get off one more play. They do have all their timeouts left, so they can go downfield and uh, get... Well, with the three timeouts, they can get more than one play. Got to be quick, though. Yeah, well, yeah, but you can. I mean, with 11 seconds, they can run one in five seconds and get a timeout and get another play. Well, what I'm saying is you want to run a play, get a timeout, and get a field goal. Huh? Maybe not now. Not going to help, and there's a penalty flag down. But there's a man open. It's Heidelberger inside the 10-yard line, and he's out of play. They'll stop the clock with a one-second left. But I think it's coming back. Penalty going to be against Montana. And how fortunate is James Madison? That is a cardinal sin for a secondary. You have very little time left. There is no way in the world you let a guy get behind you. If you have to line up on the goal line, you don't let a guy get behind you. And look how far Heidelberger came. He was at the far right of the formation, caught that ball deep at the left sideline. So instead of one second left and a field goal try or even a try for a touchdown with the ball at the eight yard line montana is back where it started at its 35. And it, it was a good call I mean, we did see the whole it was a legitimate call well that's something to remember that would have been a chip shot field goal this is a tight game let's keep an eye on the score as we keep on going late how about james madison getting outscored by 40 in the second quarter but the second quarter was won by JMU, and the Dukes have a three-point lead as we go to Rob Stone, who's standing by with Bobby Hopp, Montana head coach. Well, Coach, how have these field conditions affected your play calling? <laughs> well, I don't know. We, it, they, we faked the field goal because we didn't think our kicker could plant and kick it as well within his range, but he wasn't comfortable kicking the field goal from that range, and uh, it's not real good out there. You've dominated, but you're down. What do you tell your men in the locker room? Well, we just need to continue to execute, and things are going to go our way. It's a long game. There's a lot left, and uh, I feel confident we can get out and do that second half. Coach, thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. James Madison questioned whether Montana could win away from home 2-2 two and two on the road this year, and they trail James Madison by three as we go to Reese Davis in the studio. <laughs> James Madison is one half away from its first ever 1AA National Championship. Montana trying for its third ever 
one double-a title Dave Pashrod Gilmore Trevor Maddish getting you ready for the second half of play Montana marches down the field on its first drive in just under five minutes and scores a touchdown it's been all James Madison since why well I think what happened was for Montana they benefited from James Madison's inability to tackle they got about 140 yards after catching balls down the field because of poor tackling but what we have ultimately as James Madison settled down in a 10-7 game is this. Montana is a high-octane scoring machine. James Madison is a bulldozer. They're mutters. And this game, as it settled down after that first drive by Montana, is a James Madison mudding game. And the field conditions obviously have had something to do with that. And remember, James Madison did play in a similar situation last week in its semifinal game against... William and Mary the field conditions were poor it was muddy and they're used to this Montana's used to having its nice home field they played all three of these one double eight championship playoff games on their home field best kick of the night by far as Pete Sloan hammers that one out of the end zone let's take a look at our Home Depot coaching adjustments, Montana first. Well, first, Montana has got to attack the line of scrimmage. Don't let the offensive linemen of James, Mad of, of, uh, James Madison get double teams to them. They've got to attack. Second, they've got to throw the ball more to the running backs and tight ends because James Madison is doing a good job of taking away the wide receivers. And the third thing is high-octane scoring machine. Montana has got to change the nature of this game from a grinded-out game to a track meet. Well, James Madison will start with the football and won the opening toss and defer to the second half. Field position going to be very important in the second half and the field conditions affecting everything, including the kicking game. Maurice Fenner had a big first half, gets the opening carry, and he plows forward for about 11 yards. There was not a lot of running room to start, but lately it's been six or seven yards a pop, and that one was about 10. Well, one of the reasons is James Madison made an adjustment in the second quarter. They started going with two running backs. They got away from their one back set and they started running the ball better. That should allow them to start using some play action passes down the field to open things up. And then defensively, they got to handle the underneath wraps. That's been killing them. Maybe a zone blitz or two will help them out with that. So an 11 yard game by Fenner. First down at the 31. Quick drop for Riscotti. He's got Tolly. And Tolly may have lost the ball at the 43-yard line. He did, but they say that his knee was down. McIntyre on the tackle. Let's look at our Coca-Cola game track for the first half. Well, it's what you thought it was. The track, the field, was not good. It was bad footing, and I think the field had about three tackles. In the opening drive, Montana went down. They were surgically precise. Didn't see the end zone six. And then it was all about James Madison getting the running game going. Finner got loose and found his way into the end zone. They have been more physical than Montana since that opening drive. Fenner, again with great second effort, a flag flies in as Fenner gets to midfield. But it's three or four yards downfield before a defender touches him. They're just getting blown off the line. And right guard George Burns, number 63, at 6'2", 300 pounds, led the way that time, stayed on his block, drove his man back, and it's, boy, it's, it's a shame that a great block like that's going to get eaten up by a penalty. Yeah, somebody was cheating. Somebody was, but I don't think it was, it was Burns. He had a great block. 53 offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. It was your buddy McGurko. Yeah, that was Matt McGurko, All-American. He's had a terrific game, though, so far, and he'll figure big in the rest of this thing. Montana has got to stop him from being a road grader. So first down, back at the 33-yard line. First and 19. Alvin Banks is into the game now at running back. And Riscotti's going to keep it. Riscotti's got some running room. Past midfield of the 49-yard line. A gain of about 17 yards. Let's go to Rob Stone. 
Well, Dave, I spoke with both teams' equipment managers, asked them if there's anything they can do to help their players on this field. They said, no, no, there's not. This is what all the players are wearing. This is a half-inch stud. This is the NCAA maximum. All the guys have them right now, so there's no way they can upgrade. I talked to the staff in charge of the field maintenance. They said this is part of the NCAA contract that they laid this new sod down about a month ago. I asked if there's anything they can do. They said, uh-uh, we don't have a roller. We are at their mercy. The good news? Yeah, the bands were on it at halftime. Yeah, that certainly didn't help. And this doesn't help Montana. They are not even touching the running backs till about seven or eight yards downfield. All it takes is to make one man miss, and that's what Banks did. Well, they got him going. They had the read option before, and Trevor, we got something else going now. Right up the middle, George Burns again, right guard number 63. Here he is right here. Take a look at what he does. He drives his man out, and that's a good player, Blake Horgan, that he's able to wash past that hole. If you're getting seven or eight yards downfield, well, this is just the zone play, and he cuts it back. Banks finds that lane, and that's great vision. Fenner back into the game. First down to the 21. Fenner on the delay. Gets popped, but again, just keeps moving. Look at him go. Down to the 11-yard line. He got hit by six or seven players. Tough Harris brought him down. And Trevor and how about the variety they run the read option they have a one back offense now they come back with the fullback for a lead blocker here with a two back offense and Montana is doing everything they can Rod you mentioned in the first half that they needed to, to slant more and they started to slant more as the second quarter went along but now with all these big bodies of James Madison moving forward they, the Montana defense has got to really suck it up they're in a danger right now of getting worn down giving up more yards tonight in just over a half than they do normally in a game first down at the 11 Riscotti on the rollout Get a keep. Riscotti dies. Touchdown. Rushing touchdown this season for Justin Riscotti. Terrific athlete in high school, all-state basketball in Florida. Great football player, went to Louisville, transferred when Brian Brom was signed. And went to 1AA school because he didn't have to sit out of here. He could play right away. Rabel hits the upright again, and it goes through. He's two for two on those. A field goal that did that. Now an extra point that does it. All the bounces going the way of the Dukes, and they lead by 10. Rascotti with the rushing touchdown to push it to a 10-point edge. Every play on that drive by James Madison was at least 10 yards, including the final one. An open yard touchdown run by the quarterback, Riscotti, his ninth of the year, and James Madison leads by 10. Are we seeing some pretty good quarterback play tonight? And both these guys came down from Division 1A, and they're both playing in the championship game and playing well. Wontuck's kick is short. Seekers to the 20. Wrapped up at the 25. Let's go back to the touchdown play. This is a great call. Now they run this play this way, the fake off of the zone, which had just been run before for good yardage, but they fake it. Quarterback or Scotty keeps it. Now watch the end of the play. Does he get into the end zone? Does the ball break the plane? Well, there's an official right there on top of it. He felt he had broken the plane and had possession of the ball. Now it's the other quarterback, former Colorado Buffalo, Craig Oates, who threw for nearly 200 yards in the first half. Trying to make something happen is Tate Hancock after he gets the ball for Oates. He's met by Sid Evans, but he got about three or four yards of the play. 
And I would assume, guys, that the field conditions do not favor a passing attack, and that's what Montana is. Well, the one thing is, as Trevor, we talked about, you can't get a pass rush here. That's right, and also it makes it more likely if a receiver falls down, it could be an interception. But if a defensive back falls down, it could be a touchdown. Second and seven of the 28, and again, is Oaks changing the play, or is he just throwing out some dummy calls? Whatever he did, he got them to back up into a two-deep two deep zone. And Oaks has got a wide-open man, Waldron. He gets thrown down clothesline to the 40-yard line by Trey Townsend. But it's a 12-yard gain and a first down after a beautiful play by Oaks. Well, there's our Home Depot coaching adjustment. Throw more to the tight ends. One double-A final from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Dave Pash, Rod Gilmore, Trevor Maddich, and Rob Stone. James Madison trailed 7-0 after an opening drive by Montana that resulted in a touchdown, but 17 unanswered points for the Dukes. Riscotti with a rushing touchdown and 7 of 11 passing. James Madison in search of its first title. Montana trying for its second one in four years. And Oaks dumps it off again, and it's dropped this time by Lex Hilliard. It'll bring up second and ten. Brandon Beach hurt, but well, he's, he's gotta, no stranger to injury. Yeah, he's he's going to fix it, right? Yeah, he's got to get the loose cartilage out from his knee, the hinge in his knee, so he can bend it again, and then he'll go back out. Well, we asked him the other day when the last time was he practiced, and his teammates started laughing. He said, practice? <laughs> he doesn't practice. Alan Iverson wants to get on that program, huh? <laughs> Alvin, he is on that program. Out of the shotgun is Oaks on second and ten. Tons of time. And again, the underneath route, but it was dropped again by Seekers, but a penalty flag down. Quinn Walton was there too soon. Uh, that's one of the things we talked about James Madison having to do. They needed to get on top of the underneath routes. They were hurt by those things in the first, uh, first half. They did at that time. Pretty good coverage, but apparently a little early. But how about Craig Oaks knowing what's happening on the field? He goes to his wide receiver, Seegers, being covered by a linebacker, Quinn Walt. Pass interference, number 13, defense. Bobby Place is the foul, out of the back, first down. Now let's take another look at that one. I, I don't know that that was a good call. No, oh, that's, a bad, that's a bad call. Really bad call. I mean, he's got his hands on the ball. You know, what, what are we playing now? You can't even tackle the guy once he touches the ball? So first down now from the 46. Oak's going to run. Can't. He is thrown down to the 43 by Trey Townsend, who's having himself a ball game. Six tackles for Townsend. Second team, Atlantic 10, Trey Townsend. Well, they fake it to Lex Hilliard, try to draw the defense off, use the mobility of Oaks, but uh, James Madison was absolutely not fooled. They're trying to get something going with the running game. Now here, Hilliard's been quiet, dropped the pass earlier, but they have not run him since that first drive very often. Second and 13. Well, Oaks had a man, and he does get a completion to the 50-yard line, and a great stiff arm by Hilliard, and he's going to be about two yards shy of the first down. Well, Hilliard is a huge part of this offense, and he's only averaging two yards a carry on the run. So what do you do? You get him out. He checks out on a blitz, and then great catch. And watch what he does to Mike Wilkerson, the safety. Whoa! Right over the top. Looked like a, looked like a fullback on that one, but they will have to get this man sprung if they hope to be able to win this game. Good decision-making by Oaks. He had a man open, but elected to go to a secondary receiver who was a little bit more downfield and was running when he caught it. Here on third and two, forward progress should give him the first down as Seegers pulls it in at the 43-yard line. And you talk about Hilliard not just damaging when he runs or catches. Look at the block he throws. There's a blitz coming off the left side. Terrific. Who is that? Well, that's Wilkerson again. And that's what allows Oaks the time to complete the pass. Well, the one thing about this passing offense, they really focus on protection. They keep a running back in to try and pick up pressure from either side. Yeah, they really want to protect the quarterback. From the 43, out of the shotgun. Tate Hancock. Breaking tackles to the 27-yard line, and here comes Montana. Gain of 16 of the play. Once again, linebacker Trey Townsend, number six, was out there on the coverage. But that's a great matchup and a great decision by Oaks to go there. 
Again, yards after the catch. A couple of missed tackles in there, and Montana makes good yardage. Montana averaging 45 points per game in the championship, but only seven points tonight as Oaks gets out of trouble and again lobs and completes. Finding Seegers inside the 20. Second time he's done that successfully on this drive. He's incredible. I mean, he's made so many plays with his feet. And he stays alive, buys time, and watch. A nice little touch pass because he's got a good receiver out there. Seegers, who can pick up yardage. That's great stuff. Yeah, his temperament was to be exceptionally calm. Offensive coordinator Rob Fennessy says that he actually likes it when Oaks yells at him over the phone during games because he's always so calm. That's good right now. Oaks, 20 of 23, 235 yards passing and a touchdown. They throw the screen to the other side. It's Seegers to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Montana. Montana comes right back after the score by James Madison. And a chance to pull it in three with the point after attempt by Carpenter. Three point game. Montana 17. Or James Madison 17, rather. Montana 14 after Lavander Seegers gets his sixth touchdown of the season. I think they blew that because they were outnumbered on Today's NCAA Division I AA Football Championship game is brought to you by Kia Motors. Kia, make every mile count. And Fat Albert, Christmas Day, only in theaters. Beautiful shot of the Chattanooga Choo Choo from Lookout Mountain. You know, its name came from a newspaper reporter. You know what, the uh, sweet lady at the gift shop in the hotel on uh, her 50th wedding anniversary was, was with her husband in Sweden. And when they said they were from Chattanooga, the people in Sweden said, oh, the choo-choo. World famous. The investigative reporter Trevor Matters talking to anybody and everybody for game prep. Take will be taken at the two-yard line. Bransford. Popped at the 27 and dropped there. Well, let's get back to that touchdown play and give credit to Montana offensively out scheming. There are three receivers and there are only two defenders out there to handle this. They blitz one guy, so you got two blockers on two defenders and one guy with the ball. Out schemed and a touchdown for Montana. And credit quarterback Craig Oaks for finding that. He set that up earlier by finding the mismatch of linebackers covering wide receivers on pass routes twice and then found the mismatch where they outnumbered the defense on the left flank. Oaks, 7 of 8 on that drive, 21 of 24 for the game, couple of TDs. He sees everything. A lot of people think that he could get drafted in April by the National Football League. Running play on first down. And again, great second effort gets Alvin Banks to about the 30 for maybe four yards. Now, that drive is exactly what Montana needed. They're a high-octane, high-scoring, high-powered offense. They stretch the field horizontally. They use Craig Oates' ability to read the field and took it down for a relatively quick touchdown. That's the kind of turnaround we talked about in the Home Depot coaching adjustments. When Hauk was at Washington, he sat down with Oates, who was looking to transfer from Colorado. He thought about going to Washington, ended up in Montana, and then later, Hauk, Ended up in Montana. They were friends because Hawk was an assistant in Colorado and helped in the recruiting process at Oaks in Colorado. Here's Banks on the sweep off the ball. It's loose at the 30. Montana has it. Nick Bella comes up with it for the Grizz. Never had it cleanly. 
And now Hawks, protege, Oaks will get another chance to take the lead. Pitch was just a little bit out in front of him in Banks, who doesn't really catch many balls. They'd only thrown him six balls. He only caught six balls this year, and that pitch a little bit in front of him. He couldn't one-hand it. And now you have a short field for Montana. Montana plus nine now in the postseason, a turnover ratio plus 23 on the year. James Madison's only plus six. Oaks again an underneath route. It's caught by Talmadge. Breaks a tackle. Another one. Finally brought out of play at the nine-yard line by Walton. And you know, they actually had it defended, but they couldn't make any tackles. I mean, what, nine, ten yards after the catch? Three missed tackles. The Talmadge at 6'4", 200 pounds, is a tough guy to tackle under the best of circumstances. They're playing a two-deep coverage, and they find the soft spot right there, but they have a couple guys in position. One miss, second miss, third guy. 11 missed tackles on the day for James Madison. Montana's offense coming alive as Oaks play fakes. Being chased. And then throwing it away nicely. He was run down by Kevin Winston and got rid of it incomplete. To bring up second down. Now he should be tired. I mean, Oaks is just running around, buying time, play after play. Look what Winston does to him. As he goes down, his body's going to twist and then slam into the turf. And he slides with that throwing arm under his body. And Oaks has had a lot of injuries over the course of his career. Four concussions, although none at Montana. He was banged up, missed most of last year with an ankle injury, but he's healthy now and playing the best he has in his career. Had a broken thumb earlier this year. Second to go for the nine. And a diving try for a touchdown. Walden pulled it in beautifully. Walden with his fifth touchdown, the former Oregon Duck. Gives Montana the lead back. First time they've had it since the midway point of the first quarter. Extra point makes it a four-point game. Craig Oaks with another touchdown pass. His third of the game. This one to his tight end, Walden. Beautiful grab. Montana capitalizes on a James Madison fumble, scores in three plays in 24 seconds as Oaks finds Walden, the tight end, for another touchdown. Montana has the lead back. Moxley to the 15. Nice return to the 27-yard line. Stepped out of play there. Well, Willie Wall, the number 87, is sneaky. He's a tight end on the left side of your screen. And what he's going to do is come up and then stop like it's just a little stop route. And what that's going to do, now see him stop? Now, you've got Lazat and you've got Walton that are going to be fake. And then he's going to come through here wide open. That little move faked two very good defenders. Very sneaky guy. Yeah, he finished it nicely. Nice catch in the back of the end zone. All six foot seven of him laying out to get it. Now let's see what Riscotti can do. The quarterback for James Madison who had a rushing touchdown earlier to give James Madison a 10-point lead. But that lead has gone away as Montana has scored two quick touchdowns. And now comes up with a stop and a running play as Finner gets about three or four. But that's a lot less than he was getting earlier in the game. Early in this half, he was getting nine or ten yards every time he touched it. I, I just think they're more effective running the ball when they have a two-back offense. When they have a fullback in, it just seems to me they're more effective. They get more power inside, and they can also get to the perimeter with their fullback kicking out. Second and six at the 32.
Fenner again. And he's got the angle. However, he stepped out of bounds at the 39, but he's still got seven yards. Should be enough for the first down. We were talking earlier that Oaks could get drafted in the NFL draft in April. With more on that, let's go to Rob Stone. Yeah, just because this is one double-A football, don't think there is an NFL quality out there. I spoke with draft expert Mel Kuyper Jr. today. He told me that three Grizzlies had the chance to be selected. Two of those guys are the guys that just had to hook up for that last touchdown. Oaks, Willie Walden, and running back Justin Green. Depending on their workouts, Mel thinks all three of those guys could go in the late rounds. All right, Rob, what does that say about sophomore Lex Hilliard, who beat out Green, the senior running back, for the starting spot? Fenner on first down. And James Madison having success again with the running game. It stalled there for a little bit. But the last two plays have gone for at least eight. Last week, Fenner went for 106 yards in the second half against William and Mary. And he's getting it done again tonight. He's a hard runner. He lowers his shoulders, great leverage, and he's got good footwork in tight spaces. And, and the thing you want to watch for as this game rolls on is how many yards Fenner and Banks gain before a defender puts a, puts a mitt on them. That means that the offensive line of James Madison is beginning to take over. Fenner has 90 yards on the evening now. It was a low-scoring first half. We may have a shootout here in the second half. Fenner breaking tackles, lost the ball, but got it back at the 36-yard line. McIntyre with the stop. But again, missed tackles, this time for Montana. Look at the surge on the top of the screen. And let's see how many yards he gets before he's touched. There's five, seven, about seven or eight yards. And then he drags defenders for another five. Well, they're picking off the linebackers. The linebackers are getting caught up with the linemen. They're not getting off those blocks. And so he's seven yards into the secondary. 117 rushing yards this quarter. For James Madison, Banks' his turn. And he's got running room. What a cut. And another cut. Finally tripped up inside the 15-yard line. Couple of great moves by Banks. You can see why he was the starter at the beginning of the year. And let's see how many yards he goes before the first defender even touches him. Well, there you see it right there. Nice kick-out block to create a lane. Oh, and then it's just great move. Yeah, he gets a, a one-hand touch on the back at about seven yards, and the next guy doesn't touch until about 17. There's the one-hand touch there. Corey Davis with the, the block to the outside that created the hole that uh, Ben's got inside of. Now they go shotgun on first down to the 12. Riscotti, who had a rushing touchdown earlier in the half, inside the five. And guys, this is a lot like last week. Remember, second half, yep. after Montana was up, William and Mary, or excuse me, James Madison was up. William and Mary comes back, takes the lead. James Madison rolls with the win, 27 straight points. And they stick in that, that read option, the play that Utah's made so famous with Alex Smith. That's an Urban Meyer play. And you see the influence. It's over here with James Madison. Well, James Madison hasn't been to this game before, but Mickey Matthews, head coach, has. When he coached at Marshall with Jim Donnan, Four out of five years, Marshall was at this game. The head coach knows how to win here. They get two tight ends on second down and two. They hand it off to the fullback, Iorio. He's to about the uh, three-yard line. But why not? He's been blocking great all night. Give him a chance to run the ball. Chris Iorio, a senior from Leedsdale, Pennsylvania, getting a chance to handle the football. And it brings up third down and goal. Iorio, great basketball player, the all-time leading scorer in high school. You'd yeah. think he'd be playing receiver. Uh, you know, they, they just don't give him the ball very much. I think he only had like 16 carries during the season. Direction, I said third down and goal. It's third down and half a yard, but it's going to be first down and goal if... Uh, he has enough, but I don't think he does. You know, even though you see the chunks of grass <laughs> out there, it hasn't been an impact on this drive. No, it hasn't. It hasn't really in this half, at least for the offenses. 
and Ron, there's a lot of Montana guys with their hands on their hips. You've been in a lot of defensive huddles. What does that signify? Oh, yeah. You mentioned I got pushed around a lot. No, just that, <laughs> not that you got pushed around. No, it's not what I meant. I didn't mean it. Oh, what I meant was, you know, the worst, they're tired. The worst thing that can happen is to have an offense run the ball down your throat. I mean, it just breaks your spirit. It really does. That's what's happening. Over 120 rushing yards in 11 minutes. Third and inches. Iorio should have the first down. When a team runs the ball at you and has success, and that goes to that goes to your ego. It goes to everything that's physical and manly about football. It's the other guys beating you, just physically beating you, and that's a hard, hard pill to swallow. The James Madison players told us yesterday that they think the Atlantic Ten is more of a, a blood and guts tough league and they think the big sky where montana plays is more of a pascal and finesse league well one of these teams is going to be proven right first down and goal fenner back into the game and fenner is here touchdown and james madison has the lead again Fly down though at the goal line. There are a couple of James Madison players who are getting into it. I think one of them trying to keep the other from the official. Well, they called it on James Madison, unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, after the play, so the touchdown counts. This is going to be one of those long PAT kicks. But guys, this was just like last week. We saw William and Mary take the lead on James Madison. Mickey Matthews After rallies the, play, the troops. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 65. That's a 15-yard penalty. Be administered on the kickoff. Mickey Matthews rallies the troops like he did last week. James Madison is back on top. However, Montana's a little bit more potent than William and Mary on offense. Yeah, they, they can throw it and get back in it in a hurry. But more to your point, the Atlantic 10, you said physical, and this James Madison team felt like they had an advantage over Montana because they're physical. But Montana felt that they had an advantage because they didn't think James Madison could keep up with them. It's been back and forth. How will it end? It's been a great one double-a championship game so far with james madison retaking the lead after that nine play 72 yard drive all nine plays on the ground Fenner with a one-yard touchdown run we saw fenner and banks both getting carries remember raymond hines we told you earlier in the game the starter at least in the postseason, is out with a rib injury, but not like they don't have guys who can play. Fenner and Banks both started games this year, and guys both have fresh legs. Fenner hasn't really played the last two months. Banks is just getting back into the swing of things. Will that help in the fourth quarter? I think so, and we saw that last week when, when they had Hines. Hines really kind of took over in the first half, and then it was Fenner and Banks in the second half. But Hines is a guy who can get you chunks of yardage. He can break off 30, 40, 50 in a heartbeat. In a game of field position, you don't want this. And the ground isn't helping. Not helping the kicker, not helping the guys trying to catch the ball. Here's Seegers. He's an excellent return man, but he can't get to the outside as he is dropped and he lost the ball at the 30s, 8-yard line. And James Madison should have the football. They're going to say that he was down. Looked like the ball came out. Bradley recovered it. I thought it came out, but they say that uh, his knee was down. Let's take a look at it and see. Yeah, his knee's down. Yep, he's yep. down. And his elbow. Very good call by the official. You know, if this is your first taste of 1AA football, you've missed some really good stuff. 
Good players, good coaches, good schemes. Here's Oaks. In trouble. What a job. Tucked it beautifully and got to the 47-yard line. He got nine yards on that play. On that last drive, it was all about the ground attack. Finner, Banks, and that offensive line just cutting open the Montana defense and letting them bleed. And every single play on that drive, including the final one, was a run. They did not throw it a single time. Second and one. Hilliard on the ground for the first down of the 48-yard line. Yeah, Montana can run the ball a little bit themselves. You know, you're not going to call those guys. Say they're not physical. They're not, say they're, they're not girly men. <laughs> well, Hilliard is an explosive runner. He only started three games this year, only one of them a conference game. And yet coming into this game, he had over 900 yards and was named all Big Sky. Now, when you're a running back, only play one conference game as a starter and are named all conference, you got something going on. And yet in this game, they've not found a way to spring him in the running game yet. Well, guys, yesterday Brandon Beach was joking about the fact that he gets hurt so often and he's down again at the 48 yard line he's overcome a torn achilles a torn acl he's playing with torn meniscus in his knee but uh, looks like he's going to be all right the division one women's volleyball national championship is saturday at 4 p.m eastern on espn2 minnesota against stanford for more visit ncaasports.com the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Did you see Aaron Martin of Minnesota today against USC? I mean, man, she's amazing. She <laughs> she jumps out of the gym. She ought to be playing basketball. Heather Cox, who joined us last week on the broadcast, filling in for Rob Stone, soccer boy, is uh, attending to that game as the analyst for ESPN2 as we've got movement along the line of scrimmage. Now that amazes me in, in volleyball. When they spike that ball, I don't know how many miles an hour it's going, but people will dive and stick a forearm out and have that ball hit it to dig it out for a setup. And that's got to hurt. I play football. Snap. 73 off this. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. And it's not on grass either. You're not diving on grass hey, to, I'm, to save. I'm, I'm telling you, you need to see Aaron Martin of Minnesota play. <laughs> Watch her play tomorrow. So after the false start, it's first and 15, back at the Montana 46. They go three wide receivers here. Oaks looking for the flat. And it's Justin Green. Back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe a couple of more at the 46-yard line. Tackled by Sid Evans. And there's Sid Evans again. Defensive end. He rushes the passer. When the ball comes out, he sprints over to make tackle on the sideline. Four tackles now for Evans in the game. High school fullback turned defensive end in college. Second and seven now at the 46-yard line of JMU. James Madison has never won a national title. Montana has two already, trying for its third. Oaks belted as he gets rid of it, and it is going to be caught at the 16-yard line by Heidelberger. Wow. Wow, how he dragged one foot. I didn't think he was in. I was surprised. I thought he was going to call him out. This is something Borisnikov would have trouble doing. He dragged one foot, and almost everything else is out of bounds. Oh, that is amazing. You know, it looked like the foot was already on the sideline. That's a tough angle. Wow, but that official was right on top of it then. And how about Oates making that throw? He got leveled by Frank Cobbs, and he still completed it. Out of the 16-yard line, Green on the carry. Two hard yards to the 14 before Townsend makes the tackle. Talk about a hard yards. How about a hard hit here? Oh, oh. <laughs> Oaks hanging in there as he just got pounded by Frank Cobbs. He got hit in the sternum twice. One, Cobbs hits him with the face mask in the sternum. And then when he Oaks hits the ground, the face mask hits him again in the sternum when he bounced. I think we are seeing the test of a guy with true character, huh? Oaks, all that he has uh, overcome. Running play to Green, and he is down to the 14. 
go to Rob Stone on the sideline. Dave, you touched on it last dive. Craig Oaks has endured some really odd injuries. Last year during two days, he rolled his ankle, which forced surgery and his absence for about first half the season. Now, he didn't do it while on the field, but rather getting up from a table while at lunch. <laughs> I, I'm serious about this. And then at camp this year, while handing the ball off, he fell on that right thumb, had to have the cast on it for the first six games. Then in game seven, he pulled his calf muscle, just dropping back to pass. And we talked about those concussions, Rob, and also the fact he left because uh, he didn't have a great relationship with his new coaches at Colorado, so he decided to transfer. And oh, he doesn't oh. go down, and he almost throws an interception at the 16-yard line. It's incomplete, though. Oh, the official has to blow that whistle. When the quarterback oh. is is has a defender in his feet holding him there, if nobody else is approaching, you can let the play continue. But if somebody's approaching, you've got to throw it dead. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Protect the quarterback now. He's in the grass. He can't get out. Oh, him. man. And he's just a sitting duck. Winston had him, and then Cobbs oh. came in there late and just pounded him. But uh, he's, he's had an injury-plagued career, had one concussion in high school, three at Colorado. And then all the things that have happened here in Montana for him. 31-yard attempt as Montana is going to try to tie the game. Dan Carpenter already missed from 45. And you have to wonder if the field conditions are the reason why we're having so many poor kicks in this game as that one is wide right. That looked like a nine iron kicking up a divot. Take a look at all the dirt and sand kicked up with this ball. Yeah, that's your nine iron, a little fat, right? You yeah, well, too much of it. They yeah, do it right away. Is that is that your golf game, man? Yeah, well, my golf game, I just use a I just use a putter and just go three or four feet at a time. Mickey Matthews knows that James Madison survives that one. His team still leads by three. Five seconds remaining. This should be the final play of the third quarter. From the 20-yard line, it's Fenner. No gain of the play. It may take touchdowns, not field goals, in the fourth quarter to decide this game. Field has been a problem. But we've got a great game nonetheless here as we go to the fourth quarter. Final quarter in the 2004 1AA National Championship game from Chattanooga, Tennessee. James Madison in the white leading Montana by three. On the end around Baker. He got about 20 on that play in the first half. There he gets about four, tackled by Cooper. This weekend, PGA stars John Daly, Fred Couples, and Jay Haas take on teams from the LPGA and Champions Tours in a one-of-a-kind golf event. Don't miss the Wendy's three-tour challenge. The coverage begins Saturday at 4 Eastern on ABC. You, you a big golfer? Yeah, yeah. Not, a, not a good one, but... I've been, told, I've been told if I want low scores, I should stick to bowling. <laughs> And you see a lot of divots in golfing, but we've seen plenty of them here. The field has been chewed up since the opening drive as the pass is caught for a first down to the 31-yard line by Bransford. Let's look at our Coca-Cola game track. Well, the Grizzlies' offense has been true to form. They don't need a lot of time to score. They did that in the third quarter, quickly getting on the board a couple times with touchdown passes from Oates. But then, uh, a, a drive that was 100% run. Every single play, a run that culminates in a touchdown to answer. And again, you see the field. It has been a problem. We've seen a couple of kicks on kickoffs that have been way short because of the kicker stumbling. We've seen those field goals, field goals and PATs that are hitting the uprights and just getting through. As Alvin Banks is out to the 33 for a couple of yards. You wonder if James Madison is ever going to throw the ball again. Well, not until Montana forces them to. But, you know, we've been talking about Craig Oaks, but Justin Riscotti has very quietly been spectacular. He hasn't thrown it much, but it seems like it's always been at key third downs. Just like in that last series of plays, it was third down, he throws the ball to move the chains. There you see the difference in style of play for both those teams. James Madison, they'll run it all night. Montana, they'll throw it all night. 
neither team could kick it, so at least we're even there. Second and eight at the 33. Here's Riscotti to the air. A rare pass play in the second half. Or is it? Riscotti has great wheels, and he's out at the 40. Got about seven, going to be close to the first down. He's got a rushing touchdown tonight. Well, there's a lot of nastiness going on down here. Left tackle Corey Davis working against number 90, Mike Murphy. Does a good job of blocking. Murphy does a pretty good job of collapsing the pocket and forcing Riscotti out. Take a look at the top of your screen. 65 against nine. Look at him. Hit him in the jaw. Bam! Twice! He had a left to the jaw and a right to the ear hole. He's lucky he didn't get flagged since it went right to the helmet. Well, you've got about 100 pounds there. I mean, Corey Davis has not missed many meals. And then you got Mike Murphy is about 225, 230. And Dustin DeLue is about 215, 220. That's at least a 100-pound difference between the tackle and, and defensive ends. And Corey Davis is one of those tackles that's, that's not only a mean guy, he'll tell you he's mean, and he'll tell you that you're not really good. <laughs> he'll keep pounding you. Well, I'll tell you this. When you get hit in the ear hole, it is loud inside that helmet. It as makes a, a lot of noise. As a former NFL offensive lineman, Trevor, did you take pride in eating? The guys that I know, like Corey Davis, they love to eat. Well, there's a, there's a lot of man in that jersey, that number 65 right now. Whatever he's eating, it should be terrified. <laughs> <laughs> you still didn't answer the question about whether you took pride in eating. Well, yes. <laughs> and is that still the case today? <laughs> oh, you can pass on any question you want. I you don't have to answer. I pass. All right, first down to the 41 for James Madison. Will they keep it on the ground or will they go to the air? They're in shotgun formation here. Riscotti trips on the field and falls at the 42. And according to our official stat, man, five tackles for the field in this game. Yeah, one of our leading tacklers has really been the field. Five tackles and a couple of assists. Divots everywhere. And then guys falling down everywhere. Sand kicking up. Kickers kicking the ground. You go up and all the sand that pops up every time you see him make a cut. Look at that. It's so loose. Yeah, it's kind of like a cow pasture. You look <laughs> at it from that angle right there. This is the 24th play this half for James Madison. They have run 20 of the previous 23 plays. Only three pass plays in a half. And that looked like it was going to be a pass. And it is at the last second. And then the little guy, Baker, to the 49-yard line for about six yards. Baker, a true freshman from Richmond, Virginia. The Baker, a fearless little guy. He thinks every time he catches the ball, it's going to be a touchdown. This should be something like an option. It's kind of weird. It's sort of part shovel pass, part option, part wide receiver screen. So a third down and two coming up. Montana trying to take time off the clock. Montana needs a stop. I mean, that last drive, they were on the field. Nine plays on the ground. Almost everything here on the ground. This defense is tired. They've been pounded all night. They got to get off the field. Yeah, James Madison, I should say, trying to take time off the clock. Third down and two. Center going to be very close. Upended at the 49-yard line. Tackle by McIntyre. If they don't get it, do you even think about it? You've got a three-point lead. Mm, you punt. It's a first down. Doesn't matter. Well, the problem for Montana, you know, they don't have a lot of depth. They play a lot of the same guys. Take a look at this play here. They get right in there. There you see, once again, Corey Davis going at it. That's where the ball is. That's how they spot it to determine whether it's a first down or not. And the ball... Did cross that uh, imaginary line. Over 100 yards and two touchdowns now for Maurice Fenner. Second straight game, he's had over 100. Running play to Iorio, the fullback, third time he's carried it in this half, and he is at the 45 for about four yards. Trevor, Montana is desperately trying to stop the running game. They are now committing nine guys to stop the run. They finally, they've decided to go ahead and play Botsley one-on-one. -on -one is they're leaving him alone with one corner out there so that they can commit more guys to try and stop the running game because they haven't been able to stop it in the second half. And yet James Madison is running it anyway. 
There's Jeff Hammerschmidt up there, the defensive coordinator who worked at Arizona under Dick Tomey. was a great defensive player at the University of Arizona. Yeah, two-time All-Pac-10 defensive back. Riscotti to the air. He's got Ridley as tight end for the first down. Inside the 40 to the 37 before Adam Hogue makes the tackle. And that's a nice changeup because they recognize that Montana was committing so many guys to the run that they needed to change it up, and they threw a ball. And Ridley starts at the left side of the screen, comes all the way across the formation. Look at him go number 10. Now he's on the right of the screen. Everybody up to stop the run, and once again, we had a player fall down. Yeah, that's a block, right? We've got tackles. The field can also block if it knocks down a tackle, right? Backup linebacker Kyle right. Ryan, yeah, tripped up by the field. First down of the 38. Banks inside the 35 to about the 33. Another five-yard carry. Cooper with the tackle is fifth. The way James Madison is grinding this out right now has got to be disheartening for Montana. They're not getting big runs. They're getting three, four, five, three, four, five little runs that keep the chains moving, keep the clock going. Banks going off. He broke his leg earlier in the season. Cost him six games. Fenner then became a starter. He hurt his shoulder, and then that man, Raymond Hines, became a starter. He's hurt now, so Fenner's back to being number one. Banks is number two. They also have Antoine Bolton. All four of those guys have a 100-yard game this season. It's interesting. They didn't get hurt all at once. They got hurt in stages and became healthy again in stages. Second and six at the 34-yard line. Play fake. And Ridley again makes the play inside the 25 to the 24 for 10 yards and another first down. Boy, Riscotti selling those play fakes beautifully and finding his tight end. And how about Jeff Durden, the offensive coordinator? Last drive, nine running plays. He starts this drive with running plays. He recognizes the nine guys in the box, decides to go to start, you know, throwing the ball a little bit to the tight end to keep the drive going. He's mixing it up, doing a great job up there. And Riscotti just filling his role to perfection. Not being asked to win the game, being asked to move the chains sparingly. James Madison trying to become the first team uh, in the program's history to win a national championship. Riscotti's pass caught at the 21-yard line and another missed tackle. To the 9-yard line. A gain of 15 yards and another first down. Well, they've been hitting Tom Ridley, the starting tight end. That's Kasim Harris, the backup tight end. And Harris is a, is a load. He's 250 pounds. He had a tremendous touchdown catch last week against William & Mary, and this time he gets yards after the catch. Well, they lined him up at the wide receiver, and so cornerback Jimmy Wilson had to try to tackle him, and he was able to run right through him. First down and goal at the nine. It's Fenner off the left side. And Fenner is down at the two-yard line. Now a flag flies in. And we'll say he actually made it to the one, but again, a penalty flag is down. James Madison became the first team in 1AA history to win three straight road games in the championships to get to the championship game. Montana playing three consecutive home games, 10-0 at home on the year, 2-2 two two on the road. 65 offense, 10 yards in the lead, still first down. That's Corey Davis, the guy we were talking about earlier. Well, he's been involved in a lot of things. He's just to the right of the screen. You can't see him right there. He is right there, holding on. Oh, what? He's, he, well, you're right. He's gotten away with a lot of things. He got away with a couple of shots to the helmet. Looked like Mike Tyson for a while, and that was a bridge too far. They wouldn't let him get away any farther. So it's first down and goal. Back at the 13 now.
Riscotti going end zone. Incomplete. Foxley, the intended receiver, broken up by true freshman Jimmy Wilson, and Mickey Matthews is irate about something. Uh, he wanted a call. He thought there was contact a little early. He thought Wilson got there early. And he's right. He is. He's on his back. Well, that's two costly penalties against them. Well, we had a pass interference call earlier that was just horrible because the guy was touched after he caught the ball or tried to catch the ball. And then this one clearly on the guy's back. Right. So a penalty against him and then a non-call. Very costly. See if he goes after the true freshman again. With Scotty directing traffic. And then throws it away. Good coverage. And a penalty flag down, though. In the backfield, may have been a late hit on the quarterback. Well, going to be, yeah, play rough in the passer against Bobby Houck's team. Number 98, Kerry Mullen. Oh, man! Okay, that that's not football. Take a look at this. Shot to the face. Right there! Ooh. Man! And that should be an ejection. Yep. He should be kicked out of the game. He should be kicked out of the game. Kerry Mullen. Boy, if Montana goes on to lose this game. Now that play won't do it, but that's enough to uh, get you in a lot of trouble with your head coach. That was really, really dumb. See, that's not football. That's assault. There, there's no, no place on a football field for something like that. So instead of third down and goal from the 13, it's second down and goal at the six. Riscotti on the keeper. Touchdown! His second of the day. And Kerry Mullen should feel bad. Yeah, instead of third down and goal at the 13, you had first down and goal at the six. And Riscotti makes him pay on the first play. But Montana scored two quick touchdowns in the third quarter. And they're going to need 10 points to at least tie the game as the PAT is good by Rabel. Riscotti with two rushing touchdowns in the game. And James Madison is eight minutes away from its first ever national championship. Darn it, I said. Gary Mullen with an inexcusable penalty, a late hit, not only that, but a punch to the face of the quarterback, Riscotti. It would have been third down and goal. Instead, it's first down and goal at the six instead of 13 because of the penalty and on the first play after that for Scotty runs in for a touchdown to give James Madison a 10 point lead Heidelberger at the five runs into his own man who keeps his feet flag down Heidelberger is down as well finally at the 30. James Madison is 5 of 5 in the red zone. Four touchdowns and a field goal today. So holding on the return by Montana. James Madison with 188 rushing yards. This half, only 13 for Montana. Biggest play on that previous drive. This horrible decision by Mullen right there. NCAA Division I AA Football Championship game is brought to you by the new T-Mobile Sidekick 2 with IM, email, web browsing, and more. Everybody needs a sidekick. T-Mobile and the new Chevrolet. Ten new cars and trucks in 20 months. An American revolution. Time running out on the Grizzlies. 
Only 7.50 to play. They're down 10 points. Oaks having a great day, though. 25 of 30, 320 yards, three touchdowns. And he's got Hancock out of bounds at the 26. Let's check in with Rob Stone. Guys, the last seven days, the James Madison football team, all too familiar with do not disturb signs, these useless hangers and the tiny soap. I never understood it. See, after their semifinal win, they jumped on the bus, headed back to campus, got in at 3 a.m. Campus was closed because classes are over, so they had pre-packed their bags and picked them up in the locker room, went to a hotel a couple blocks away from campus. Since then, I'll let this play go by, and I'll tell you how to finish it up. All right, Rob, Oaks pass caught. Talmadge this time to the 35 for about nine. Go ahead, Rob. So they picked up their bags, headed to this off-campus hotel, and basically because classes were done, guys, they had extra time for team meetings this week. They were able to go to the gym on their own time, and they had tons of free time. Basically, they were like professionals this week, right, Rob? Absolutely. No studying time, no finals. Second and one. And it's a first down grab by Seegers to the 40-yard line, gain of about five. Well, Jim, you coach Mickey Matthews knows about being a road warrior one double A when he was defensive coordinator at Marshall. They were in two buses coming down to play Virginia Military Institute. One of the buses broke down. So they put all the starters on one bus, left Mickey Matthews with the rest of them, thumbing rides from Marshall fans driving down to the game. Following us, Sports Center here on ESPN2. We have at least seven and a half minutes to go here as that pass is incomplete. Only the sixth incompletion. Oaks getting rid of it after he was hit by Winston incomplete. And yeah, Rob mentioned campus being closed and you know, students are home on break, but there's still a lot of people back in Harrisburg watching the game. All the sports bars and places are filled up and folks are watching. There are a whole bunch of folks at Buffalo Wild Wings with their 33 screen TVs watching James Madison. Sounds good right about now. Second and 10, Oaks. He's got Talmadge. And he makes the grab at the 35 yard line. Another pretty throw by Craig Oaks. Well, Oaks clearly made the right decision in moving on to Montana. And he needed a new fresh start relationships had soured at Colorado with the coaching staff there and he admits part of it was his own fault but since he's been in Montana gosh he's been an incredible quarterback maybe turned himself into an NFL quarterback first out of the 35 and some moving along the offensive line and again we don't know if Oaks was actually changed the way or if there are some dummy calls but it messed up the right tackle true freshman Cody Baylog Ball start, 71 offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. And Baylog forced it because of injuries. He'll be at the top of your screen, their offensive lineman. But he has done a terrific job today. Normally, you would think, going against an outstanding defense, that he would be beaten a few times, and we'd show his opponent beating him. But we haven't shown that all game. That's the first mistake he's made today. So first and 15 at the 40, four wide receivers in the game. Oaks. James Madison starting to get more pressure on Oaks. He had to get rid of that one too quickly. Heidelberger, the intended receiver, incomplete. And obviously James Madison playing very soft in the secondary, very deep, not allowing anyone to get behind him as they did in the first half. They want to make Montana use the clock, use a lot of time before they can get into the end zone. Remember, James Madison, 55 sacks this year, a 1-double-A record. They had 11 in a game against Lehigh, 10 in another game this year. And they're coming after Oaks as he gets hit again and overthrows his man, Seegers. But again, pressure, the reason for that incompletion. Winston got to the quarterback that time, and that's the uh, fourth time today that he's put pressure on Oaks. Uh, they're bringing four guys not rushing three anymore and getting some pressure in there and pretty decent coverage. But that's what caused it. Baylog had a nice block on Winston, but coverage forced Oaks to hold the ball a little bit too long. Coming up next on ESPN2 Sports Center. Montana four of eight on third down. They got to get 15. Oaks sacked back at the 41 by Beach, who came back into the game despite an injury. It 
doesn't matter whether it's an Achilles, a knee, whatever, Brandon Beach is going to play through it. Look at him. Look at him. He's hurt. It doesn't matter. He's going to play. Well, he's banged up. He's got a couple guys blocking on him out there. You know, he's had to pop his knee back into place a couple times tonight, yet he still gets in there to make a play. So they got to make one more play because Montana's going for it on fourth down and 16 of the 41. <laughs> James Madison drops eight. And Oaks is going deep. And it's intercepted at the five-yard line by Kent. And James Madison will take over with just over six minutes remaining and a 10-point lead. Penalty flag down after the play. Kent, who had an interception return for a touchdown last week, comes up with another pick here tonight, his fifth on the season. And Oaks was just trying to uh, make a play there. And James Madison, with that great ground attack, may be able to keep the ball away from Montana for the remainder of the game. After the play, I sports with my conduct. Number 41, the defense. 15-yard penalty, no half distance to goal. The first and 10, James Madison. And right in the middle, Bandit Beach. And the kind of courage that he's showing, fighting off that double team and going to the outside to make that sack at a championship run. If James Madison can hold on, that's the kind of thing that legends are made of. And in this last play, you see Oaks throwing into coverage. James Madison really dropped four guys deep. And Oaks threw right into coverage. And Clint Kent picked it off. Might have been better if he just could have battered it down. Oh, you don't, you know, you don't bat him down when you get a chance to get a pick. You, you don't get many. Although Clint had one last week for a pick six. So first down at the nine. Here they go, pounding it on the ground. And there's tons of running room for Fennick. All the way to the 25 yard line. And Mickey Matthews. The head coach for uh, James Madison. Such a great relationship with his son Clayton, who has uh, overcome two broken necks, paralyzed from the waist down. Former quarterback under Matthews at James Madison. But the adversity that Clayton has faced has grown, enriched the relationship between he, his father, and his mother. Throwing the family closer together, it's taught them about perseverance, and here they are, five and a half minutes away. The family trying to get James Madison its first national championship. This is the senior class that Clayton would have been playing with had his injuries not occurred. He would have been a senior participating in this game. And as far as the team's concerned, he is every bit as par a part of what they're doing right now as he ever would have been if he were suited up and running around. Clay Matthews suffered those broken necks in car accidents. Was a great quarterback in high school, won a state championship in Georgia. Was the backup quarterback to Matt Lazat for a couple of years. And uh, has been uh, a nice addition to the coaching staff, so to speak, during this championship run for James Madison. Well, we saw him last week at William & Mary. He was on the sideline, and he was not afraid to give his dad his opinion about what they ought to be doing. And he would have been on the sideline tonight, but for the fact that it's so cold here that they thought it was best for him to be up in the booth. It's really a great story, regardless of how Things play out here in the next four and a half minutes. Only 12 rushing yards for Montana in the second half. And you see four times as many rushing yards in the second half for James Madison. They got more. Fenn to the 50. That's another huge gain on the ground for Fenner, about 25 yards there. You know, guys, that nine play drive early in the second half that led to a touchdown, I think took an awful lot out of the Montana defense. And then they came right back the next drive and marched down the field as well. His team has been beat up physically by this offensive line that is a lot bigger and a lot more physical than this small defense can handle. 
151 yards for Maury Spenner. And again, he has not really played in the last two months until last week. Fresh legs at over 100 yards last week, over 100 in this game. And it certainly helps to have fresh legs when you're playing your 15th game of the season, which you do in 1AA playoff games. When you get to this point of the year, you got some of the guys that are tired. The guys that have fresher legs are usually the guys on the winning team. Yeah, that Montana defense is not fresh. As I mentioned earlier, they don't play a lot of guys on their defense. And these guys have been pushed around, and they're tired. They've been tired, and they've been beat up by this offensive line. Don't forget Sports Center following us here on ESPN2, the Division Three Championship. As you see it rolling across uh, your screen, bottom of your screen tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern ESPN2. We've had a terrific 1AA final here in Chattanooga. And if James Madison can keep the ball on the ground and keep it away from Montana, the Dukes will have their first national championship. They're the first school from Virginia in 1AA. Even get to the semifinals. Here they are in the title game, 320 or so away from a championship. And what does it say about the Atlantic 10? I mean, they had four teams in the field of 16 in the playoffs. And they've got one in the championship game here tonight, playing very well, looking like they're going to become the champs. And James Madison didn't even get the automatic berth to the playoffs from the Atlantic 10. That was William and Mary. This is an at-large berth from that conference. James Madison having to win three consecutive road games in the 1AA championships to get to this final game. Again, you would think that they would be the, the team that's tired. They've been traveling, playing road games, playing in foreign cities, living in hotels for the last week and a half. But it's Montana that has run out of gas. James Madison with 300 rushing yards in this game. Well, the one thing the James Madison coaches said yesterday, you know, Montana is tough at home. They are really tough at home, but they're only two and two on the road this season, and this is a road game for Montana. So they felt confident that they'd be able to handle Montana since it was a road game for them. Now, now that makes a lot of sense, but if you're the coach, you got to tell your guys something, because Montana is a, a terrific tradition. Make no mistake. Montana's going to have to start calling timeouts, and this would be a good time right here. And they will call their first timeout as it will bring up third down at about five. Make no mistake, the quality of this Montana team and the quality of their program. This is the fifth time in the last ten years they've been in this championship game. But Montana right now trails by ten with just over two minutes to play. The big dogs up front. For James Madison, the story here, especially in the second half, the Dukes up 10, 2.05 to go in search of their first ever national title. This is the first time they've gotten to the championship game. Last week was the first time they even reached the semifinals. And Riscotti going to take off on third down and five. And it looks like he's got the first down as he is at the 30-yard line before he's knocked out of play. It is a first down for James Madison. Two timeouts remaining for Montana. But you have to be happy for Riscotti and also for Craig Oaks. Guys who were at Division 1A schools in Colorado and Louisville respectively came to these schools and got their schools to this championship game and performed well. They essentially fulfilled some of their, their dreams. Riscotti, a sophomore, Oaks, a senior, could be late-round draft pick in the NFL. Riscotti will have two more years of eligibility and perhaps a ring. They'll try to stay in bounds, Fenner does, but he was knocked out of play inside the 30 of the 28. <laughs> 75 plays for James Madison tonight. 57 have been on the ground. We'll be back. Former Colorado Buffalo and current Montana Grizzly, Craig Oaks. Disappointing knowing that he might not even get back on the field, but he has done everything that he could tonight. 371 yards, and the one interception was late on fourth down. He was just trying to throw it up there and make a play. What a great night and a great career for Craig Oaks. Well, you know, all that stuff he did, it won't mean anything to him because he's not getting a championship. I mean, as well as he played tonight, he wanted a championship for his team, not the stats for himself. 
Never know. Maybe he'll get a shot to play at the next level as uh, Fenner takes off inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. And Montana will use its final timeout. And that's sort of the nature of, of losing in the playoffs where in the, when you're, you're really upset for a while. You're not bitter, but it's a miserable experience. And then after that emotion fades, and sometimes it takes months, then you look back with pride at the accomplishments that you had on the season. What do you guys think about Oaks at the next level? You do have a 1AA quarterback starting the NFL right now, Josh McCown. The Arizona Cardinals from Sam Houston State. Tony Romo could be at some point in Dallas. He's a former 1AA quarterback, won the uh, Walter Payton Award at Eastern Illinois. What do you guys think about Oaks at the NFL level? I think he's a smart quarterback with good feet. He's got good presence out there. You know, he's, he's got a chance to get into a camp and, and maybe make a practice squad. And, you know, who knows after that? And stick around long enough, you get a chance. I, I think he's got some skills that people will like. He, he doesn't have the prototypical size or the prototypical arm. He's good. He's got a good arm. Let's go ahead and take a look at our Pontiac game-changing performance. Those big guys up front for James Madison have been the difference. The offensive line has been outstanding, especially in the second half. 244 rushing yards in the second half for James Madison. 57 in the first half, 244 in the second half. And a little help from Maurice Fenner, who's done some terrific running on his own after getting five or seven yards down the field, Trevor. He's been terrific. On third down and three, it's appropriate that Fenner gets six. Montana cannot stop the clock once they reset it. No more timeouts remaining for the Grizz. But on the offensive side of the ball, it seems like everybody has been a support player to the stars here, the offensive line of James Madison. We've got three seniors up front for James Madison, and their best player is a junior, Matt Bagurko, the left tackle, normally your best offensive lineman, Corey Davis, is just a sophomore. Briscotti takes a knee. Again, no timeouts remaining. Now that Montana defense spent just too much time on the field. They just couldn't find a way to get a third down stop when they needed one to get off the field and get a break, and they were just on the field too much and got pounded too much. Look at Mickey Matthews. First time in the postseason since 1999. A school record 12 wins and the first ever national championship at James Madison University. One more knee, and there it is. The Dukes are the best in 1AA football as Mickey Matthews will take a national championship back home to Virginia. games to a national title for James Madison and standing by with Mickey Matthews is Rob Stone. Stoner. Well coach your running game was absolutely dominant in the second half. Why was that? Well we felt like we could run the ball. We were really upset we didn't run it better at, at the first quarter but uh, we, we were trying to keep their quarterback off the field and he he is such a great player we knew we couldn't hold up unless we ran the ball and ran some time off the clock. Coach, you are able to achieve this without having a home game during the playoffs. What does that say about this team? Well, it's a, it's a veteran group. And, like, you know, we played as bad in the first quarter if you could play. And I was really proud. We, we showed the character. We showed all year to come back and play really well. Congratulations to your team and your family, Coach. Thank you. Mickey Matthews and the James Madison Dukes win the 2004 1AA championship. Great year for Montana. 
getting here for the fifth time, but it's James Madison hoisting the trophy in Chattanooga. Up next, Sports Center. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Rod Gilmore, Trevor Maddox, Rob Stone, and I are tired. ESPN 2 crew. I'm Dave Pash. For summaries and stats of this game, log on to ESPN.com. Your home for college football on the internet. James Madison 31, Montana 21. The Dukes got down early. It was 7-0 quickly. But James Madison bounces back and wins it by 10 to capture its first ever national championship. So long from Chattanooga. Sports Center is next.